Shalom, Malak, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Y'all about shimmy, y'all shabrak a thumb. Y'all about shimmy, y'all shabrak a thumb, King. It's good to have you in the house. Man. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. The water for bringing us back on, King. Man, always look forward to it, love. So what I was going to do is let all the uh, Hebrew hustlers get home, you know, get set up so they can come in. Uh, a couple brothers in there, sisters in there, Shalawam, Sister Dorothy, Shalawam, Abad, Bayan, Zakar, Shalawam. And the whole Shalawam, 12, Shalawam. family, the whole 12 days family and all the Malachians. So tonight, the congregation of the dead. So I'm just going to let this beat rise for a little minute. Try to set the tone. You know, we're going to go in. And uh, we'll get it started. Sean, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, King. All right, come, come, come. Let's get back in the game. All oh, praises, all praises. Woo, family. Shalom, shalom, everybody in the house, everybody coming in, and everybody who's going to see it later. Shalom. Oh, kind of see Elder in the house. Shalom, Yasha'Allah, Bahasham. Look at Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashem, Raka, Kadash, Barakatham. I love it. See the Hebrew? He, he can put the Hebrew in there. You see that? I love that right there. He has it on his Texas, too. Man, that's tight. All right, all praises. Yeah, as you guys know, we have 12 gates in the house. Um, Pop coming on soon, or are you coming on later, Ot? Con, Con, he was just asking about the link, so I'm not sure if he got it quite yet. Let me let me, uh, let me, me try to run it by him one more time. Maybe he oh. didn't get it. Oh, praises. Let's see real quick. Mijo, can you get this cat out of here? He's going to knock the green screen down. <laughs> Man, there's so many animals running around. Mijo. The cat. Get him. And then you got to shut my door. <laughs> Come on. 
So, Con King, I'm just going to touch base with the family real fast and just let them know. Um, so, family, uh, one of the major things in Israel is um, Israel. Israel got to uh, take note of the warnings. We got to take note of all the uh, failures, all the achievements, um, you know, things before time or for our learning. Our forefathers went through things. Um, we fell off. Uh, we stood tall. You know, we had our ups and downs. You know, we went through it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and a lot of it has to do with our congregations. Um, you know, when Hamashiach hit the scene, they didn't want to receive him. And uh, and they was basically, uh, you know, anti the most, most high's uh, son. And um, Shalom, Elder Shalom, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Baraka, Da King. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, Pops. Y'all buy some of your shop right now. Shalom. Shalom. Rock a thumb. So how's everybody doing tonight? Feeling good? Ready to get into this class? Let's get it. Let's get it. Everything is fine. I heard that. All Everything is going well. Con, con. And um, again, when Hamashiach stepped on the scene, you know what I'm saying? He stepped into a bunch of different sects. He's like, he was like a bomb going off. Everybody was tripping on him. Um, you know, even the well-studied Paul under Gamaliel, all of these people were tripping off him. And, you know, he had to do a major thing and shake him up and wake him up, you know, and then so he could take him up. You know what I'm saying? Shake him up, wake him up so he could take him up, just like you see the chariot behind me. So tonight we want to make sure that we're not in a congregation of the dead and that we help uh, understand what a congregation of the dead is. Uh, we also want to make sure that we understand that it takes us to regulate and protect this nation. Um, and uh, there's a flip side to the coin. There's a congregation of the living. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. I, won't, I won't be taking too much thunder tonight. Um, I will be uh, backseating while the strong kings bring it out. And then um, I have plenty. But um, it, it, this could be a series as far as I'm concerned, because I'm so excited to bring a lot of this out. Um, so. I'm just going to do a quick intro real quick. We're going to give all praises. Call Halayim, Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Hamashiach, Wamalak, Yahweh Shai. Barakatham to the nation, to the Mashbaka, to the sincere double shots to the elders, um, and all those out there doing the work. And you know what? Wow. Even Barak a thought to y'all that aren't sincere but are finding your way through this mess, This uh, the Most High has a way to make you sincere. He has a way to get you straight. He has a way for these law, statutes, and commandments to uh, straighten your path. So all praises. I see Danya Allah in the house. Shalom, Israel. Khan. Um, so, yeah, we got some love going on. Let me just make sure we can see Elder. I don't want um, I don't want any of these comments to block out Elder. So let's see. I can get that off there right now. Hide. Khan. Khan. So when Elder comes back in, we'll bring him back in. Um, and then just real quick. Um, stay tuned at the end because uh, we're going to uh, talk about where um, Black Wall Street, we're going to be there this weekend, uh, Most High Willing, every first and third Shabbat. They're out there selling all these Egyptian unks and everything. It's the place to be to, you know, help our people understand. There's a, a Garnacea in the same shopping mall. And they're all just buying pork and coming in and out. So it's wild, man. And our people, you know, they don't know these laws and they're in the congregation of the dead. Uh, going to a church that ain't even telling them that they're committing sin against the most high God. Oh. So, so with that, beloved, uh, as soon as Pops comes back, we'll have you, uh, Khan, look at that. He's already here. Let me add him to stream. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, family. Everybody already knows they need no introduction. They're a beloved Mashpaka, uh, powerful to the nation. Um, they're very dear to me, father and son, duo. They go hard, even grandsons. I mean, everybody, the whole family is is just dipped in the rakah. So with that, King, I'm going to turn it over to the beloved. All praises to the Most High. You want to open up there? All praises, all praises. Um, yeah, I wanted to start off with Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 5. Khan. Baba Kachah. Khan, Khan. Ezekiel 37. This is the book of Ezekiel, uh, Salakia. First of all, I'd like to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And to water again, King, for bringing us back on. It's a blessing to be here, Ark. Okay. 
Ezekiel 37, 1 through 5, and it reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Shalakia, Shalakia, Uriel, Shalakia for that. I, I'd like to say that as well. I'd like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem and Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. I, I wanted to start off like that myself. All praises. All praises. Shalakia, can you go ahead and start over? Con, con, start from the top again? Yes. Con. Well, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, from the top. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Shalakia, Israel. Shalakia, Shalakia. I just wanted to elaborate on that. This is, huh. this is what the problem is with a lot of our people right now. A lot of our people are spiritually dead. So Ezekiel, he was prophesying to the dry bones of our people. He was saying, can these dry bones live? See, as long as the people are walking around here asleep, doing all the things that are contrary to the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments, they're spiritually dead. So he was prophesying to wake up the dry bone. Read on. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Con. And so the once see once the see this goes back to from to the beginning too when you know the most high he breathed that living soul into Adam. That was the 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 breath of life, which was the law, statutes, and commandments. And our uh -huh. people came came to a lot to life then. And right now a lot of our people, you know, a lot of them are waking up and we're praying for, you know, the elect to wake up so we can get up out of this captivity. But a lot of them are still spiritually dead. So right. we're we're praying and we're prophesying to these dry bones so that they can wake up. Read on. Verse six, and I will <clears throat> slack you, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And see, once the people, once he you know, they get the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They come to life. This is what the problem was with Nicodemus when Yahweh was trying to tell him, you must be born again. And Nicodemus, was he was confounded with Yahweh Shai. Then how can a man be, go enter into his mother's womb a second time? But that's not what he was trying to tell him. He, he was trying to tell him, you have to change everything that you've been taught and be taught again. Come and on. then you're going to come alive. And with, you're going to walk in the newness of life, which is in your Come. Read on. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Verse 8. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews in the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them above. But there was no... This? Shalakia, Shalakia, this, this, is, this is what we're trying to do. When we go out on the Sabbath, we out there prophesying, we're trying to wake up the dry bones. We're hoping that once them seeds are planted, that, that it'll get watered, and then they'll wake up and come to life. This is what we're trying to do every Sabbath. Every uh -huh. time we out there on those corners, we're trying to wake the people up and bring them back to life. Uh -huh. but, go ahead. Um, I'm going to read... Um... Verse seven again, or verse eight, one more time. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews in the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse nine. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, 
prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And that, and, and see, that, <laughs> that wind is a, it, is, it could mean a couple of things, but that, what we're, what we're trying to do, we're, we're out there blowing the trumpet, we're out there bringing out these precepts, we're blowing the, every time we're out there, we're blowing that trumpet, we're blowing, we're bringing out the words, and we're hoping that these people will wake up and come to life in the newness of life and start doing the law, statutes, and commandments. This is what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Come, get that Baruch 4 and 1 in their spirit. Come, oh, come. You want me to grab that up? Let's do it, man. You know that you know that's so powerful. <laughs> come, come. It, it, it was that was on the list. That was on the list. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I you know I snuck a peek. You know, this I'm good. Whenever y'all want to bring it. <laughs> All right, this is the book of Baruch, chapter four, starting at verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. See, this is this is serious with the Most High. He says they must they must come back and do these law, statutes, and commandments. Because they were never done away with. Right. The law said they never went anywhere. He's in, in the, I believe the book of Sirach, he says the law remains in its force. It was never done away with. Like they, uh, the churches are telling everybody that all the laws are done away with. But they were never done away with. This is what it's saying in the book of Baruch. Uh, Read on. Was, verse 2. Is that, was that it on that? That's verse 1. I get verse 2, though. Yeah, I get verse 2. Verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Mm. And then they're going to be illuminated, say of the mm -hmm. Most High. That's once they, once they start keep being a doer of the word, applying what he said in the scriptures, then they're going to be illuminated. Then they're going to come to light. But as uh, long as they're saying, mm -hmm. doing all the things contrary to what the Most High is saying, they're going to stay in this congregation of the dead. They're not going to they're not going to have life. And, um, and can we get Proverbs 21, verse 16? Um, Proverbs 21, verse 16. Yeah, we got to open up with that one. Hence the title, right? So this is the book of Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So that, that's, crit, that's crystal clear. If they don't, if they don't have any wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, they're gonna remain in the congregation of the dead. So mm -hmm. what is what gives people the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? The Haushai said it through David, said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He said, A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. God. So we have to keep the law, statutes, mm -hmm. and commandments to get the understanding. Otherwise, right. we're gonna remain in the congregation of the dead. That's right. And I, I like to go to I like to go to Genesis two and two verse seven just to to just go back to the, to the beginning from the foundation. I like to just go there really fast. Con, con, con. Just to, before we get that, Elder, can we can we grab Second Ezra three real quick? <laughs> con, con. Just just expound on that because that's going to go perfect with this real fast. So let me let me grab the Second Ezra if you don't mind. Con, this, con. this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter three, and I'm gonna start at verse four. And I'm gonna read down to verse seven, <clears throat> and it reads, "O Lord, who bearest rule? Thou speakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone, and Salakia, and that thyself alone, and commandest the people. So from the very beginning, the Most High God gave us commandments." It didn't start God. with Moses. It, it started from the very beginning. We had laws. Verse five. God. And and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the God. workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was God. made a, and he was made living before thee. So contrary to what a lot of people think that the body is what is alive. No, the Bible says in John 6 and 63, it's the spirit that quickened it, the flesh profit, if nothing. So when the Most High breathed into Adam, that's what made him a living soul. 
verse God. 6. And thou leadest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. See, Proverbs 21 and 16 says, he who wonder out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. See, we got to love the way of the Lord. What did Yahweh Shai say in John 14 and 6? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. We got to stay on that right way, that right and correct path. Let me start at verse 7 again, 2 Andrews 3 and 7. It says, and unto him that gave his commandment to love thy way, that gladness of heart, serving him with cheer in our spirit. Which he transgressed. You see, Adam transgressed the way. He transgressed the commandment. Reading on. And immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, peoples, and kindreds out of number. So the Most High God gave Adam commandments. He told him to love the way, but then Adam transgressed. And as a result, we transgressed because we inherited that same sin. And that's why God. we got to come back to that way, come back to loving the way. So now I'll go to Genesis 2 and 7 to get that for you, Pops. And I'll start, King. And, and you know, the chat, the chat, fill in the spirit. Uh, after you read that Genesis and break it down, I'm going to touch on some of the things the chat was saying. Go ahead, King. God, God. All praises. God. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that, that's where it started. That was the law of statutes and commandments, which Uriel, you brought it out quite well. You elaborated on it well. So yeah, it all started from the beginning, and, he ne and it was never done away with, which uh, the church has always tell our people that we don't have to keep the laws and that we're just under the grace. And it's, it's kind of ironic that they say that, because anybody that goes to a job, they always have a probationary period. And if they don't do right, they get rid of them about the job. So how do we, this, is, this is what really puzzles me about when they even say that, that we don't have to keep any of the laws. You know, this is funny when they say that. Yeah, so, it, it's so funny. It's so funny that we're going to cut it. We're going to cut it to shreds tonight. Watch God, this. God. So you read from Genesis. We're going to stay in Genesis. It's the same thing. Genesis 26 and 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. Bro, they put the whole carpet out on that verse. Mm, you know? So so not only that, look at what sis said in here that I had to bust up on, but it's the, it's the <laughs> truth. It's sad. Khan saying the laws were done away with has to be the worst lie ever told. That's, That's what sis. Right, Ain't that something? Uh -huh. And one of the kings, if we don't mind, because, you know, they're very interactive. Uh, when you kings come on here and you start stimulating the nation, um, I want to at least just grab a couple of their precepts and we'll jump right back. Uh -huh. um, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> Yasha Allah put, <clears throat> yes, Elder Yasha Allah. He put 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Know ye oh, not that ye oh, which oh. run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run. That you may obtain. So, what race are they running? What are they? What's the good fight they're fighting? What What is the congregation even? What are they even doing? You know what I'm saying? We're we fight in this world to keep our commandments. And there was a time when we didn't have to fight so hard to keep a Passover, to get off work, you know, to do all these. And then there was a time when we were in Egypt. Let my people go. So it's such a fight just to uh, come out of this world. But then when you come out of it and you go back and get your people like um, to go back and get lot out of Sodom, right. And bring them out. So they don't get this destruction there. The congregation of the dead is such a big thing because if you don't come out, you're going to, you're going to die. You're going to be destroyed. You're Sorry. already having come to life and Baruch four one is, is killer because you guys touched on it. You come to life. Mm -hmm. God. As you come and you're already breathing, but that's not the life. It's the life that Ak brought out. You come to life when you start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, and that's why Baruch four and one and that second Ezra's that's so pillar for our nation to continue to bring out when we hit the streets and when we teach, because the congregation of the dead is the congregation that don't keep the commands. That's right. That's God. it. Mm -hmm. uh, one God. more, one more from uh, Abad Bayan, Mighty Malak. 
33 and 66. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So that's talking to us. And strength of salvation. So without that wisdom and knowledge that you get, as Elder brought out in Psalms 111, verse 10, uh, that, you know, you get understanding by keeping his commandments, starting with the fear of the Lord. You, you, it starts with the fear of the Lord, keeping the commandments. You get the wisdom and understanding, and that'll be the stability in thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Fire, King. And Shalom, Sister Angela Melendez, all praises. Shalom, and the, sis. And the family's Shalom. giving a big con, Elder, they said to Shalom. you, bringing that out. And I, I yield, family. Con, con. You got some power? Uh, yeah, Uriel, would you get uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34 con. through 36, Baba Kasha? Con, con. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, starting at verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So but Apostle some, Paul, he, Shalakia, Shalakia, you're real. Apostle Paul is telling us to awake, awake to righteousness. And see, when people aren't doing the things that the Most High is saying, they are going to be continuing in that mud and the mire. They're going to stay spiritually dead. This is what they have to do. They have to awake to righteousness and start to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Read on. on. Verse 35. But some man will say, how art thou dead, Slaki? How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Verse 36. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Mm. And see, you were bringing that out about what Christ said in John 6 and 63, it's the spirit that quickened it. The flesh mm -hmm. profited nothing. This goes right with that. How we have to we have to put to death the deeds of our body so that we can live and come alive in Yahawashai. This is the only way that we can come alive and come to life. This God. this oh this uh carnal bodies and these tents, these tabernacles, these vessels, these filthy rags of ours, we have to put keep those crucified. Like uh, Paul was saying in Galatians, how I've been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And mm -hmm. the life we now have to live, we have to live for the one who gave himself for us. So oh, this is what right. we, have, we have to do. We, we have to do this on a daily base, basis. You know, mm -hmm. this is, this is a, a life thing. It's our, our life. It's our heritage. This is something we have to do. And, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, it, it's been a... a, a a challenge, but it's also been a pleasure and an honor to do the work because we get a lot of a lot of scoffers. We get a lot of gainsayers. We out there we get a lot of different spirits, but that's why he told us to put on the whole armor of Christ because we gonna get all this. They gonna throw the fiery darts at us. But uh, was that it on that, Yurio? Yeah, that's 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 verse thirty six. Yep. Can you get Matthew ten, verse seven through eight? Con, con. And, and, re and real quick before I grab that, since we right here, um, just just I like to highlight since we write in this chapter, Paul, Paul is saying thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Now, look at what he says con. in verse 30. Look what he says in verse 31. He says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Hamashiach, Yahweh, our Lord. I die daily. daily. Con. Con. So we got to put the deeds of the flesh to rest so that we can be risen with Yahweh one day. So you said Man. Matthew chapter 10. Real quick, beloved, this congregation <laughs> of the dead thing could be spun in like so many directions, Ock, because we, like King said, we got to die daily. Our king had to be put to death for, you know, eternal glory for the kingdom and everything. Um, you know, we sacrifice the lamb on Passover. Uh, we have to uh, kill our flesh. Uh, it, it really is serious. Even in the temples, um, you know, there there was a lot of death in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we stone. We are the congregation of the dead. You'll end up dead breaking these commandments. That's how serious it is. That's right. God. That's right. Mm -hmm. God. Yep, straight facts. That's right. God. What do you want to have? Matthew 10 and God, Matthew, Matthew 10, verse 7 through 8. Right. God. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, starting at verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal so the we sick. Shalakia, yes. when we get out there, we have to let them know that this is urgent. 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is why they, they have to wake up to this righteousness. Because we have the kingdom waiting for us. Read on. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. So Yahweh is telling us. He told Peter and all them. Don't you know that you have the power to do all these things in my name? So we have to go out and do the same things that he was doing. We have to walk mm -hmm. even as he walked. We have to go and raise these people that are spiritually dead. That's what we're trying to do. Raise them up, get them into the newness of life and to get on track, come out of the, the, the world. And, and they got to stop being conformed to this world and be, re, you know, they have to get the renewing of their mind. They have mm -hmm. to, they have to do these things. Mm -hmm. Is that, was that it on that one? Yeah, that's it on that. Uh, yeah. Can you get a, a John 9 and 39? Come. This is the book of John, chapter 9, verse 39. And Yahweh said, For judgment I am coming to the world into this world, that they which see not might see, and, and that they which see might be made blind. So a lot of people they have to stop looking at this thing carnally. They have to they have to stop looking at it carnally and look at things spiritually. They have to stop worrying about all this stuff that's all around them and start walking in the spirit. Because if they're doing that and seeking, seeking for the kingdom of heaven, all these things that they're chasing is going to be added to them anyway. They don't need to worry about all this carnal stuff. They just need to seek the kingdom, walk in the spirit, and then all these things are going to be added. And, and you, you know how, like David said, we, they're going to see and know that the, and taste that the Lord is good once they come to him and submit humble themselves down and really start doing what he's saying, they're going to see how good he really is. They're right. fighting with something that, man, it's like the, the words is like sweet as honey. But they, mm -hmm. they think it's so bitter to them. It may be bitter at first because they have to make some changes. That's what it is. They don't want to give up this mm -hmm. carnal stuff. That's what a lot of it is. God. I'd like to go back to Matthew 10, um, the last verse that we, we brought out in verse 7, because I wanted to highlight something real quick, if I may. Um, Matthew 10 and 7, and it says, And as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, Yahweh oh. said to preach, to speak. That's what he came to do, is to bring forth the law, statutes, and commandments, to teach the faith, to tell our people to repent. But he always spoke to them. So I want to... I want to touch on John chapter 5 in verse 25, just elaborating on that point. John 5, verse 25, and it reads, Verily, verily, I said, say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So how does one become alive is that they got to receive the word. They got to hear that word. That is why in the next chapter, in John 6 and 63, Yahweh Shai says this, the classic, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And that is a common right. theme from Genesis to Revelation. The Most High is telling the prophets to go speak the word because it's the word that's going to make those dry bones live. It's going to be that word that brings one from that dead state to alive. And if I may, brothers, just one more real quick before, before I pass it. I want to uh, just touch on Lazarus, if I may, y'all. Uh. So th this is the book of John, chapter 11. I'm going to do a bit of reading on this, if that's all right, brothers. Uh. I'm going to read uh. Uh, verse 1 to 14, and I'm going to jump down. So this is John, chapter 11, the story of uh, Lazarus, starting at verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Yahweh heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of Yahweh, that the son of Yahweh might be glorified thereby. So the Most High was going to receive glory out of this uh, incident right here. Verse 5. Now, Yahweh loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, 
he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Ju Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Verse 9, Yahawashai answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. And we know that light is talking about Yahawashai himself, the embodiment of the word, as it says in no. Proverbs 6 and 23, the law is a light. Verse 10, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth. Now that's parabolic and walking into sin says, because there is no light in him. There is no wisdom, knowledge, and understanding him disobeying the laws of God. Verse 11, God. these things said, said, Salakia, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it, Yahweh shall spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoke, spoken of taking of rest and sleep. So the disciples thought it was literal sleep, but Yahweh had to let them know, no, Lazarus has passed away. He has died at this point. Verse 14, then said Yahweh unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So he had to let them know he passed away. So now I'm going to jump down to verse 39 and I'm going to read to 44. John 11, 39, Yahweh said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Yahweh saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. And see, that's a common theme when we see Yahweh speaking to people before they are healed. He'd mm -hmm. always ask them, do you believe? And if they did, he would say, your faith has made thee whole or yeah. made thee well. Verse 40, 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Yahweh lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Mm. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus. Come forth, verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was, a, was bound about with a napkin. Yahweh saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. So I want to jump down to verse 25 and 26 now to close the point. John 11, 25 and 26. Yahweh said unto her, I am the resurrection in the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, mm. yet, yet shall he live. Mm. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believeth thou this. Now, I wanted oh, to, I wanted to point out something. When did, when did Lazarus come out the grave? Did he just stand up and walk out on his own? Or did he hear something? Mm. Yahweh said, Lazarus, when he heard the Lord speak, that's when he came to life. That is why we have to receive these words, because like the Bible says in John 6 and 63, the flesh profiteth nothing but the word quickeneth. Yeah. The word makes us alive. But any time we hear the Lord's words, that is what gives us that breath of life and we live. Y'all got it. Uh, now you brought uh, that out. All praises by Hashem. Uh, uh, I for that recall, Hakadesh, bro. That, that was real talk right there. <laughs> Go all ahead, praises. King. <laughs> you got some pops or anyone got some? Con, con. Uh, Sirach, uh 51, uh, verse 22 to 25. Con. And Sirach then can, can you go from there to Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2? Con, con. So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 51. You said 22 to 25, right? 22 to 25, con. Come. Come. Verse 22 to 25. The Lord have given me a tongue for my reward, and I will praise him therewith. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of the learning, or Salaki, and dwell in the house of learning. Verse oh. 24. Wherefore are ye slow 
And what say ye to these things? Seeing your souls are very thirsty. So, verse 20. Shalaki and Uriel. So, the Lord is, he, <laughs> it always, it, it always goes back. You said it. It always, it started with the word, like he said in John chapter one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is what's going to do it. Mm. We have to, we have to send the word. Like he said in uh, Psalms 107, he sent his word and healed them. God. The word has to be spoken. That's mm -hmm. the only way they're going to get healed is by hearing the word. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when they're rejecting it, all they're doing is rejecting life because Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They're just right. rejecting life. Right. And, and not, just, not just life, but an abundant life, life more abundant because- you know, people stutter step with this thing, but when you wholeheartedly give your life to Hamashiach, or when he says life more abundant, you're going to fill the whole spectrum, Ak. You're going to love your nation. You won't, you know, you're not going to be selfish. Uh, you're going to grow and manifest. Die, all the, oh, it's like a, a, a reptile who sheds skin. You know what I'm saying? You just oh. come out of that old dead uh, film that's over your eyes. The scales fall. Uh, your face start glowing. I mean, the Most High does a thing with an individual. All praises. Come on. Come, come All praises. All praises. Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, from the top. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's a lot here, Uriel. So the Lord is telling, he said to just come. Come and get this word. Come and get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's not going to cost you anything, but it's going to cost you some time. You're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to put the footwork in because he said faith without works is dead. You know, Barack was talking about Abraham earlier. That's what, you know, righteous Abraham, he did the work. Because we have to put the do the, the work and have faith. It's not just about believing. We have to do this footwork too. Read uh, on. Verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And uh, your labor for that which satisfieth not. Because see, they're out here, Shalakia, they out here chasing all the wrong things. They out here looking, they're trying to get some gratification in this world. But they're finding out that it's it's always give, they're getting the blues every time they're chasing all that stuff. They get the blues. End. It's a, a dead end. You're right, Barack. It's a it's been a dead end. That's all they're doing. They're getting they're they're dying or they're going to jail. Something's mm -hmm. happening to them. They're losing their kids. It's, every time they're trying to do it their way instead of letting them sitting back and being you know a, a, just sitting back and letting the Most High navigate. Mm -hmm. Just follow your Hawashai. And just sit because you know, I said and did everything that the most high told him. Everything he was doing was what the most high told him. But what right. we got to do, we have to follow your Read right. on. Reading on, verse 2 Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good. And, and let your. And, Shalakia, mm -hmm. and what's good? This is, he said in Romans, mm -hmm. this is what's good. Didn't he say that in Romans mm -hmm. chapter 7? Mm -hmm. So this is what's good, the law of statutes and commandments. Isn't right. this what's good for us? That's right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you said? Come. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going I'm to uh, read back a little bit. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in its itself in fatness. This is what's going to fill, fill your spirit. This is mm -hmm. what's going to fill that cup. This is what's going to keep keep the lamps burning by getting into the word on a daily basis and, and just eating, eating the whole roll. Right. This is what's going. This is what's going to help you. Your mm -hmm. rock said it. This is going to give you that abundant life. You're mm -hmm. going to have that life more abundantly. You hit it right on the head with that. Mm -hmm. Read on, verse three, Isaiah fifty-five and three. Incline your ear and come unto me here. And your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Hello, and we yeah. and we <laughs> we all know that that was the king sitting on the throne. Ooh. So the Lord 
if you're doing the things that he says, you're gonna you're gonna get promoted to honor. It's just a matter of time. But a lot of people are impatient. They want that that instant gratification, instant copy, instant photo. They just can't. This is why he said to be anxious for nothing in Philippians. David said it in Psalm. We have to wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he's going to strengthen our hearts. But a lot of people have been, they just too impatient. That's why they want to stay out there in that congregation of the dead, because they want to get it their way and have it their way, like Burger King, I guess. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know those two powerful words together, sure mercies. <laughs> We're sure going to get the mercies that David got. And David got showed a lot of mercy because he transgressed. So the Most High is saying, if you come my way, even if you fall short, I'll give you the mercy I gave David. God. 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 That's right. Hey, but one, that's more, the, one more thing. Like it. Uh, it says, hearken diligently in verse two. It's not to be played with. Like, for instance, I say this um, because this is a way to hit it on the head. When um, you lose your car keys and you're about to go to a job interview or you got to go somewhere important, you got to be somewhere and you can't find your car keys, are you going to be lackadacious about looking for them, or are you going to flip the couch upside down? Wow. Flipping that couch upside down. We better hearken diligently to these scriptures and be marinating, meditating, and be just dipped in them, all like the fatness, so we can get that fatness. Bring that out. Wow. That's right. That's right. Uh, real quick, uh, uh, there's, a lot, there's, some, there's some precepts in here. We'll come back to them. But um, there was a brother that was asking to to come on, brother. Um, I tell you what, we always have open arms and things for brothers who want to maybe come on. But uh, we're gonna let the uh, uh, elder and the brothers all present, and then when they present, then um, I'll drop a link in there. And then if you want to just come and bless the congregation, that that's a that's a beautiful thing. Um, but with that, we'll come back to the uh, to the chat in a minute. Go ahead, Kings. Come, come. Oh, you you want to get uh, James chapter 2, Uriel? Come on, come on. James chapter 2, verse 18 through 24, Baba Kasha. Come on. <clears throat> This is the book of James, chapter 2, starting at verse 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Shalak, yeah, shalak. So this... <laughs> James is making it clear. He's not going to just use his mouth and show you lip service. James is saying, I'm going to show you with my deeds. Come he on. says, I'm going to show you with my lifestyle. I'm going to show you by how I live my life. I'm going right. to show you by letting my light so shine. So mm -hmm. all men can see my good works and glorify Yahweh, which is in heaven. This, That's one, right. this is what James is saying. Read on. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. God. Verse Read 20. On. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Man. So they, they got to quit. They got to quit be it, contemplating this thing. They got to, well, I'll do this when I'm older. Oh, I, 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 I ain't got time for this right now. I'll wait. I'll wait till I'm older and I'll do this. See, that, that's pride. That's that pride. They don't, they don't, James actually said, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring right. in another chapter in the same book. They don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. The most high, they're trying to, try to, trying to be the most high, speaking on his behalf. He's the one that controls each day. So we got to, we got to redeem the time and, and we got to make haste and delay not to keep these commandments. That's right. Read on. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when See, he had offered Tilakia? Barack had brought up Abraham earlier. We was gonna touch on Abraham. Abraham wasn't gonna get left out in this. We was gonna touch on him. Read verse 21 again. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Verse wow. 22. Seest thou how how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And it, he, it all went hand in hand. He was being obedient to Yahweh Shai, but he also believed in him. That's why Abraham was a friend to Yahweh Shai. And we got to remember, to be the world's friend, we become Yahweh's enemy. 
Because this is what a lot of people don't realize. When they out there just keep running out there doing all the things that are contrary, they, they're his enemy. Mm-hmm. That's why things are happening to them, because they're his enemy. Kind of Read sorry. on. Verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed Yahweh, mm-hmm. and it was in and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he God. was called the friend of God. Ain't that beautiful? The... <laughs> and that's, that's what we want to be. We want to be the friend of Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. We want to be his friend. And if I can just get one more with this, John 15, 14 through 15, we want to be his friend. That's why we the next... keep... Well, go ahead. Lock in. I was gonna say, did you want me to get the next verse too? You said 24, right? Yeah, 24, and then then go to John uh 15, Baba Kashan. Con, con, con. James 2 and 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified mm. and not by faith only. Con. It all goes hand in hand. It's faith and works. It's not just believing, just saying, oh, he's in my heart, because uh, Jeremiah, he touched on that heart, saying how the heart was deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So th- just going on your heart, no, that's not going to cut it with the most high. We have to put the works in as well. Con, that's right. You, you got that John 15? Con, con, I got it. This is the book of John. Con, con. This is the book of John, chapter 15, starting at verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. He's, this, this is a stipulation, isn't it? He says, ye are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. Read. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I See? have called you... Shalak here. He, this is a stipulation. Right. He, we're only going to be his friends if we're doing whatever he's commanding us. Read on, Uriel. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Mm. John, this, and this is what, see, that's why I was saying earlier, Yahabashai was saying everything that his father told him to say. He was just doing everything in obedience to him. And that's what we have to do. We have to be obedient. And we have to walk even as he walked. Con, that's right. Is that it on that one? Yeah, look, that's that's, it. And look at how beautiful the commandments are. John 15 and 17. These things I command you. That you love one another. Con. I mean, Con. Come on now. Con. So, hold on. So if the commandments are done away with, then what you what you all talking about? We ain't supposed to love each other anymore? <laughs> yeah, bring that out. Bring that out. Con. Hey. And, but, you know, like, in, let's, let's go back to James, too, real quick, because I wanted to point out something real fast. In uh, verse uh, 20, I believe it was, or verse 19, James 2 and 19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Because a lot of people say they believe, but according to the scriptures, that's not enough, because even the demons believe. That's not going to cut uh-huh. it with the Most High. There has to be something accompanied with that belief, as James goes on to say. The works have to accompany that faith. And if I can uh-huh. elaborate with Sirach 32 and 24, just to prove that fact, this is the book of Sirach 32 and 24, and it reads, He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment, and he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. You see that? Uh, so we can't just say we believe in disobeying the, the laws of, of the Most High God. That's a that's an oxymoron. They go hand in hand like the brother brought out. They're like peanut butter and jelly. You got to keep them together. If uh, we have faith, they got to be accompanied with the works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and you know what? Um, these are good precepts, family. Um, you know, a lot of us that come into this truth, we're still working on family members. Right. That's never going to happen. Uh, these are outstanding precepts to lay on the table and just say, you seen this? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like putting a, a, a stack of hundreds on the table. If you're going to take notice to these scriptures, you feel me? Because they, they don't come back void. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gone, gone. All praises. And, and, you know, this is all dealing with the congregation of the living. You know, those yeah. who are going to receive the word, those who are going to obey the word. But they got to hear the word. 
like Lazarus did when Yahawashai spoke. He got up and stood up and became that living soul again. When, when Adam became that living soul, he received that breath of life, the laws of God. Well, check this out. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, verse four. It says, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. See, those who want to keep living a sinful state, they can't become wise. And what is wisdom again, as the elder brought out? The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. But those God. who are breaking the commandments, that wisdom is not going to come in. Verse 5, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit mm -hmm. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Isn't that what uh, we opened up with earlier in Proverbs 21, 16? Those who mm -hmm. wander out of the way of understanding mm -hmm. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see right. that? So that Holy Spirit of discipline, discipline, discipleship, Okay, like it says in Colossians, we got to mortify our members. We got to discipline God. ourselves in this thing. It God. says if we don't do that, that wisdom emphatically is going to leave us. Right. That's that's a certainty. Verse six, God. for wisdom is a loving spirit, like Brother Barak just highlighted in John 15. How can we keep the laws if we don't love our brother, right? God. For wisdom is a loving spirit. It will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For God is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. Mm. So the Most High is taking right. record of everything mm. we're doing if, 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 if our actions are lining up with our words. So in order to be on that straight and narrow, to follow the way, the truth, and the life, we got to be disciplined. We got to stay. We got to stay in the law, statutes, and commandments as instructed of the Lord. Y'all got it. God. 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 Uh, you got something, Barack? Or we got the floor still? Oh, man, bro, you already know. It's red carpet when you brothers is in the house. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, let's let's get 2 Peter, Uriel, verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. Come on, come on. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Con. So this this is Peter, but Yahweh he he came in the volume of the book. He's speaking through all of them. This is all him. He said, It is written of me to do thy will. Psalms 40 and 7 and 8. And then Hebrews, it talks about that. So He's saying how we have, once we start listening and applying these laws, statutes, and commandments, you're going to, this is saying the same thing. You're going to wait. That day dawn, you're going you're gonna to be illuminated because you're starting to take heed and start applying them to your life. This is what, read this again, Uriel. Read that again. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until Shalakia, Shalakia, because a lot of our people, as long as they're in that congregation of the dead, they're walking in the darkness. Um, Christ is the light of the world. This is the only way they're going to get that light. This is the only way they're going to be illuminated, by coming um, to the light and coming to applying the laws the statutes and commandments. This is the only way they're going to be able to do it. Read and get on. that stability. And get that stability. So like you, that the king had brought out earlier, it's the stability. Um, you know, I just real fast, I had got a phone call from my father. And you guys know last week we had some drama last hour on Thursday. And my oh. dad my, my dad has been fighting um, like the anxiety of what happened. He's just waiting for the cops to roll up on him and, and take him away. And um and I told him, you know, uh, when you get into these scriptures, you, the most high will give you peace beyond all understanding. He's going to be a light in that dark place, because other than that, you're going to worry. So I broke down some scriptures today about, you know, worrying can't give you one more cubit or one more day or one more hour of your life. And uh -huh. you get all that in the word. You know what I'm saying? You get all that understanding. The spirit of the understanding comes upon you and you're just like you're released. 
and you come out of the dead. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like Lazarus, like King said, Lazarus, come forth. You got to read the word. That's the word of Hamashiach. He is the word, John 1 and 1. Yes, so God. Beautiful. Keep going, Kings. Uh, oh, God. Uh, you're, Con, Con, second answer is 14, verse 34 to 35. Con, Con. Second answer is 14, verse 34 to 35. Con. This is the book of second Ezra, chapter 14, starting at verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye be ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. And and this is twofold. Because remember in, in uh, first John Shalaki Israel, he said we've already passed from death to life because we love the brother. And what is love? Love is keeping the commandments. That's this is right. still going with the law, statutes, and commandments. Mm -hmm. Read on. Verse 35. For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Con. See, Shalakia, a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize that they've been here before. Christ was saying all those who followed him in the regenerations that keep following them and doing what he's saying, they're going to be sitting up there on the, over the 12 tribes of Israel. Didn't he say that in the book of Luke? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't really, he, <laughs> he is the resurrection and the light. They've been here before. And it's a lot of the same spirits that back here that was giving Yahweh a bad time back in Rome. Mm -hmm. A lot of the same spirits that was giving Moses a bad time in, in Egypt. A lot of the same spirits that was given Isaiah time during the time of the Assyrian. Hmm. It's the same spirit. They right. back here. This is the seventh captivity. So this is it. They got to get it together and this go around. Man. You know. There's not, nothing new under the sun, right? <laughs> not even the people. That's right. That's right. Uh, verse, verse 36. Let no, no man no, there. Oh, no, that's it on that. That's, that's it on, on that phrase. one. That's it so, on that one. So it says, after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. See, those who, who are living righteous, they're going to be resurrected unto life. But those God. who are living wicked, they're going to be resurrected unto death. So I want to get Second Ezra 15, and I'm going to start at verse 24, dealing with the congregation of the dead. It says, God. starting at verse 24, Second Ezra 15, 24 and on. Woe to them that sin." And keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Now, it may seem redundant. It mm. may seem repetitive. I mean, we say this all the time, that our people are stiff-necked and hard-hearted. They, they have to learn in repetition. This is why the Most High God repeats things consistently throughout the scriptures. So if it sounds redundant, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Hey, it is what it is. That's how we learn. <laughs> Verse 24, woe to them that sin. And keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, destruction, death and destruction to those that sin. Verse 25, I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary, for the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. God. And therefore delivereth he them unto death and, de and destruction. Verse 27, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And ye shall remain in them, for Yahweh shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. You see that? That is the congregation of the dead Ooh. without a shadow of a doubt right yeah. there. Ooh. Those um. who remain in that sinful state, that unrepented state, they are going to die, not only in um. this life, but in that second death. And this is what the scriptures literally say. So I'm going to get one more. Oh, sorry, yeah, get that. But I wanted to tell you, that's the nails in the coffin of the congregation of the dead. That's right. That, I mean, that's the oh, nails in the I mean, this word don't come back void. Mm -hmm. God. I, mean, I mean, King, I mean, this is the most fire right here, you know, um, because look, for the Lord knoweth all them that sin against them. All. None of you breaking them commandments or hiding behind the tree eating swine. God. No, you're God. seeing you're on Front Street, right? Mm -hmm. His eyes are what? A thousand times? Ten thousand times. Ten, brighter than the sun. <laughs> hey, I go down into the pits of hell, you're there. I go here, you're there. 
and therefore deliver him them unto death and destroy. Bro, it can't be no clearer. Right. It can't be yeah. no clear. Uh, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Plagues are here, and ye shall remain in them. Woo! God, God. That's nails in the coffin. God. And, and 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 what what the brothers is trying to do, you know, these brothers who are standing up in these last days on these corners, doing these videos, taking time to prepare studies and sermons, is we trying to prevent our brothers and sisters from going that route. So that they can God. be spared in the day of judgment. But unfortunately, for two thirds of our people, they're going to they gonna get that licking. It's coming. Right. But for those who have an ear to hear, this is why we're doing this, to wake them up. Because that God. fire is going to come. Like the brother just said, his word will not return void. If the Lord has declared it, it is going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. and, and it's ironic because when you, when you examine the scriptures, the Most High God always sent out a prophet or prophets right before he did something very climatic. It's not a coincidence that brothers is waking up in the masses right now, warning the people, bringing out this fire to let everyone know, hey, that judgment's coming. Get ready. But, hey, they, they want to shrug the shoulder. The elder just did a video uh, uh, this last Sabbath about that, how they shrug the shoulder. They keep turning the shoulder away. Stiff neck. Hey, them is going to be them brothers. Uh, they going to find out on that day. Like, 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 like Deacon from Sakari said, they going to find out when the missiles fly. Mm. They're going to they gonna get it when the missiles fly. So that's what we're doing, though. We're trying to save our brothers from that judgment if we can. You know, Con. he he who Con. is wise does what? When if souls, Con? Mm -hmm. Con. And, and that's what and, we're trying to do. And don't it just make us treasure this truth more, too, when we know how severe and how serious it is? So Con. that's just, even the truth is more abundant to us when we read what, what the other side of the coin is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and how yeah. graceful and merciful he is, because, you know, we were them stiff and it gives us hope for them, you know, especially for a sinner like myself. I love Paul. You know, I was chief of the sinners. You know, I was putting Christians to death. I was killing those putting faith in the Mashiach. So, you know, I tell a lot of uh, brothers and stuff that, you know, come from the pen and they've been through, they do some atrocious things. And I tell them, well, that's who we came for, the, the sick, the ill, you know, for he came God. for them. And, uh, and I want to say, uh, the beloved congregation of the 12 Gates, um, please put this on your channel. Share it uh, because we want to put the fear of Yahweh into every creature. The Bible says preach the gospel to all creatures. Even the Gentiles got to know that if y'all don't show some respect to Israel and quit faking the funk and acting like you do, you know who Israel is. We're under these curses. You know who Israel is. Like King says, we're woke up in these last days on your block, in your face, 3D, right. all in the place. All praises, King. Come. Come. That's right, King. Mm -hmm. All praise. Hallelujah. You got some pops? Con, con, uh, so rock, uh, chapter two, verse 15 through 16. God, con. This is the book of Sirach, chapter two, starting at verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they Shalakia, that love. Shalakia, Uriel. See how he started this? You see how he started that? He said, they that fear the Lord, they will not disobey his word. God, that's right. Read on. And they that love him will keep his ways. See, so that Christ said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people just hate him. That's what I see. Yeah. They hate they hate him. Because yep. if they love, they always say how they love him, but they're not doing anything he says. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. lip service. Right. Um, that's just that lip service. They gotta they gotta quit with this and start being a doer of the word. Just like you know? parents. Par parents, they know that feeling very well. A child could say he love you, but he won't do a chore you ask him to do. You know, he won't do what he's supposed to do. You're gonna look at that child like, what kind of love is that? Right. God. Done. Hey, and, and, and to that same note, in any relationship, right? Yeah, con, con. And you, if you say you love some, yeah. con. If you love someone, you you gonna show them through what your works. Con, con. Not just con. your words, but your works. Both. They gotta go. They gotta go hand in hand. Even con. to an even to an animal. 
because look at the works Noah did to make the ark for the animals. And then look at people who keep animals. You might go to somebody's house and they're like, man, your dog living good, bro. Your dog, you know, <laughs> you know and then you might go to someone else's house. And there ain't no water in the dog boat. There's flies on the dude, the poor animal's face. Mm -hmm. Like anything you do, it's on site. It's on display for the most high to see your works. You feel right. Like right. God. Yeah. That's a great point, too, Barack, because we're supposed to be what? We're supposed to be stewards, God, right? God. We're, supposed to, we're supposed to manage the, the, the things that the Most High God has, has given us. And, 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 I, and I think I heard you make a point, too, like even when it comes to these heathens, like we don't, we don't, want, uh, we don't want slaves to be disrespecting us and, yeah. and bucking up against us. And, you know, we, we, we want to treat them in such a way, get strong, go out there and do that work, pick them grapes. <laughs> You know, you know, just 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 stay cordial, you know, and, and everything will be all right. But the moment you get to tripping, hey, right. we, <laughs> know, we know the grapes is heck of big in the promised land. We know they're heavy. I'm going to give you two workers. Go on. And carry them grapes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. All right. All praise. Uh, Sirach 2, verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Mm. Con, con. Wow. Well, if they love him, they're going to keep those laws. They're going to keep the commandments. Just like he said, the ones that love him. So they're they, they going to have to quit with the lip service. They got to start applying it. I mean, it's, it's clear because the, the scriptures, they speak, they speak for themselves. And this is how the ones that can, those that are spiritual, they have a right to judge. That's how you can see them. That's why Christ said he came into this world so that the blind could see. And those that see may become blind. You're going to be able to see them spiritually. Mm -hmm. They can tell you anything, but you're going to be looking at their fruits. Are they, are, they, are they living up to what they're saying? I hear you say that, Barack. They got to be applying it. Yeah, they have to be doing this. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, yeah, they, they should just... Oh, All of us too. Yeah, because remember um, Samuel um, and, um, uh, you know, he, he was like dealing with uh, Israel being hard headed and all that stuff. And, you know, you start getting frustrated. Uh, Moses, he's getting frustrated. You know, even the best of us, you know, we, we get frustrated. We get we get struggles. We get this and that. So we got to just kind of just stay in it. And that's why you have to have a congregation with beloved, sincere elders and Malachiam and, and just brothers that are just sold out just straight God. sold out to just doing it the way he says and reaping that harvest and here's a good thing it's kind of like we're spoiled because we do it and then we get to see all his blessings but it's only for those who are doing it you know what i'm saying so God. 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 yeah God. 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 Uh, Shalakia, Barack. I, just, I just wanted to say something then they, you know, they'll, they'll complain, you know, about things not going well. Didn't Job say, acquaint thyself with thee and things will go well for thee? Mm -hmm. and right. get, he said, get to know me. Get to know me how I do things. Right. And then start applying it. Start doing what I'm saying. Then right. things are going to go well. They're going right. to go well. Right. Exactly. I, got a I got a precept for you. Job uh, 38, verse 3. Mm. Bring that Baba up. Kasha. Get Job 38, verse 3. Right, Let's see right. what just because see Job was perfect. He was perfect because he kept the laws. Con con. This is the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Woo. So he, he this is he, this is most high. He said, Gird up thyself like a man. We he don't want us to be out here just playing around. He wanted us to be like he said. The, in Ezekiel, he said the sheep of his pasture are men. That's right. So we got to what are men supposed to do? They're supposed to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Rule their house well, do all right. things decently in order. They're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing all these things that Yahweh tried to say. That's God. being a man. That's right. God. I wasn't a man until I came to these commandments. I Bring didn't down. realize. I, hey, that that light shined on me, and I saw all my flaws within the first, you know, couple months of being in this truth studying. It was like I was being exposed, exposed. But the good thing was, is you can make that fix. You can correct. God. You can start applying. So yeah, man, that's beautiful, King. We got to gird up our loins like a man 
for I will God. demand it. That's our father saying, come here, mijo. Didn't I ask him, you know what I'm saying? That's real right there. God. All right. And, and just to elaborate on that point, Barack, you know, you know, we got to bring this out. First Kings chapter two. Y'all know where I'm going with this. First Kings two, two through bring four. Bring it out. Bring it out. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. See, now some people might stop there and think, okay, a man, what, bench press 400 pounds, you know, <laughs> he, 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 he the strongest looking, right? No, no, that, that's not what makes a man. Let's see what makes a man. Verse three, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God mm. to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, that thou God. mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said mm. he, a mm. man on the throne of Israel. Drop the mic. Boom. Right there. Uh -huh. See that? The most high uh -huh. is telling us. He said, this is what makes you a man. You keep my charge. You keep my law, statutes, and commandments. Your way will become prosperous. The same thing Joshua said. Joshua 1 and 8. We got to keep these laws and meditate on them day and night. That is what makes a man. God. 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 Outstanding. God. Um, real quick, if I may... Um, Akim, uh, if we could go back to that Sirach too, that's all right, brothers. Yes, all right. I'm, all I'm right. posting them up there so everybody could read along and soak it up with us. Ak. All praises. Mm -hmm. So, pops, you had called verse 15 and 16. I'm gonna start at 15 and read down to 18 this time. So, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get those same two verses, and I'm gonna get uh, the last two. It says, They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him will be filled with the law. They so, that. Uh, what chapter is that, King? Sirach chapter 2. Come. 15, Sirach, yeah, go ahead. 15 through 18. Verse 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, wow. saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as God. his majesty is, so is his mercy. Now, just in these four verses, we see they that fear the Lord. OK, mm -hmm. now one of these days. I'm going to look up how many times in the scriptures it says to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's something I think I read probably on every page in the scriptures. Practically, the most High God is telling that telling us we have to. To understand who's in control, who's in power here, and why should right. we fear him? Psalms 119. Y'all yeah, know where I'm going with it. Mm -hmm. Verse 120. And it reads, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. You see that? Right. So why must we why should we fear the Lord? Why must we fear the most high God? It's because of his judgments. He's the one who kills. He's the one who makes alive. He's the one who brings the plagues. He's the one who does all this. We're not in control. I, I, like I tell my kids and I tell my brothers and sisters, if you think you in control of your life, hold your breath until I say stop. <laughs> and you're going to find out real quick on how fast or how, how much we're not in control. So we must fear his judgments. Otherwise, we are going to remain in that congregation of the dead. That's that's guaranteed. Y'all got it. Con. Con. Uh, you want to get Ephesians 5, verse 14? Yeah, Ephesians 5, verse 14. Con, con. Ephesians 5, starting at verse 14. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Con. Wherefore he saith, awake, that, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. And Hamashiach shall give thee light. Mm. That's clear. That's clear. We they have to wake from this sleep state so that they can come out of the congregation of the dead. Okay. They gotta they, they gotta turn. You know, and, and when you when you read in uh Timothy, he said, 
those that call on the name of the Lord, they must turn from wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. If they're calling on his name, they have to they have to keep the laws. They can't be playing with him because now they, they, they're trying to make him a mockery. They're making a mockery of him. Mm -hmm. The ones that's actually calling on his name and saying that they, they serve him. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is they, they're, they're being like the apostates and just crucifying him over and over. Right. So this thing gets serious. Yeah. This this becomes a serious matter mm -hmm. to what they're doing. They're playing with fire here, mm -hmm. especially now that we see the you know the day approaching. He he said us. He said we uh we need to really be doing this thing urgently and redeeming the time. Right. You know this is this is what I stress because the warning signs is out there. They see what's going on all over the world. I don't get what people need to. What do they need for? I know he said the, that the Jews and Corinthians require a sign, mm -hmm. and the and the or the and the Greeks they seek wisdom. You know he said that in Corinthians chapter one, but we seek the crucified Christ. Right. right. We we have that faith that he died for us, but we also going to do the works, mm -hmm. and that's what we want the people to do. We want them to do it. Okay. We're trying to get them to do it so we can get out of here. They have to be sealed. It has to be that hundred forty-four thousand feel so we can get out of here. Oh, oh. Uh, King, I'd like to uh, address that kind of that question you put out there, King. Um, you said, "What what is it going to take?" You know what I'm saying? Oh. Um, this is what's going on. So, when when brothers and sisters in this world, their God is comfort. That's their God. If they can get comfortable, then they don't want to mess that up. You know what I'm saying? Like, but their comfort is a, is a fake. It's not real. The scripture says, put nothing above your God. So um, if your God has something to tell you, and that means it requires a change on your end, it requires you to make some adjustments and you don't want to do them because you're not comfortable doing them. Then what is your God? Comfort. Uh, you want to be comfortable. Uh, like, for instance, some people will, will, will work at a job and uh, uh, try to acquire money so they can have a comfortable life. But when you start looking at the most high, putting him first, all those things can be added unto you. That's so really right. they're like in reverse mode. You know what I'm saying? They're putting uh, what God will give them as their God. And then mm. I see that a lot. Um, Cause I, I ask people like, okay, are you going, did you read today? Or are you going to get into reading? Are you going to study or if you don't read, maybe you can listen to the Bible. You know, when are you going to go search out God's understanding? When? Mm. You know, nah, uh. I'm more comfortable doing this over here. So I said, okay, well, how about get with a congregation and we'll bring it out? You know what I'm saying? We're trying everything to try to just bring them in slowly, restoring them in the spirit of meekness. But you brought out a good question. What is it going to take? They got to stop being comfortable in the captivity and want to be put in the fire. Oh, there you go, Ark. All oh, praises. That's right. That's right. You in the spirit, Ark. Hey, yeah. Pops. We was just talking about this, wasn't we? God. We, God. we was literally just, you in the spirit, Ark. We was literally God. just talking about this, how brothers is, is putting things in the world first and not seeking the kingdom first. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the thing. You nailed it on the head. Was, was the scripture saying, Sirach 2, when thou comest to serve the Lord, what Prepare do we got to do? Prepare yourself for you temptation. You're going to deal with temptations. Mm -hmm. it, is that did he say prepare thyself for comfort? Yep, exactly. L luxury. Yeah, they have did the he, love of the world. Uh sister sister said they have the love of the world instead of the fear of the most high. And you just said it. Everything is from the fear of the most high. You know, even my uh, health as I'm getting older, uh we have some beloved elders in the body and they're like you got to make some changes. I mean, they told me straight up. You know, they gave me an outline of what I had to do. I, I had I started doing it. I feel better today. Um, God. You know, I feel way better, and it, but it took discipline. I had to say no and, and then say yeah. You know what I mean? I had to let God. that go and pick that up. And that's what they need oh, to do. They need to trade in the world, that old busted, disgusted, can't be trusted, and get with the most high God and fall in love with these laws and commandments, the brotherhood, the mashpaka, the nation. When have you ever been a part of a nation? If you think you're a part of the American United States nation, you're blind. You're so blind. When have we ever had a nation we can call our nation? 
Uh, back in the days of King David. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it's been a minute, Ark. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hey, but you, but that's the thing. You you said it. We got to get rid of that old man. Mm -hmm. We got to put away the old deed. So if, if I may, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, the classic. Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, God. highlight all things are become new. But mm. see, all too God. often, brothers aren't willing to fully surrender. Right. They, they they'll they'll go they'll go a little ways, like it mm -hmm. says in the parable of the sower. But as soon yeah. as the cares of the world right. or the deceitfulness of riches come in, they out the door. They out the door. They can't deal with it no more because they didn't count the cost. Right. They didn't right. they took their hand off the plow because they wasn't able to resist the temptations that came their way. But that's why we got to continue to keep our eyes on the prize, on the on the kingdom of heaven. That's what we should be aiming for. Not mm -hmm. like like you said, Barack, not the comfort of this world, because if right. that's the God. case, Satan, the spiritual demon, yep. let's say it like that, <laughs> yeah, will reward you with with, with those desires. Right. That's right. You know? But the that's most right. high, he's he going to scrape us up. He's going to bruise us up. He's right. going to put us to the test and through that fiery furnace of affliction, as the scriptures say. So we, we just have to keep that in mind. We got to look at the prophets, what they went through. They didn't have a cakewalk. OK, they didn't have it easy. They was being persecuted. They was being whipped, stoned, put to death. They didn't have it. They didn't have it easy. Brothers betraying them, turning mm -hmm. on them. And, and, and I hear a lot of this uh, within the camps, too. Brothers leaving camps because of rebuke, because exactly. of correction. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. scriptures literally say reproof is the what? Way of life. Way, the way life. of life. It's the way uh, of life. Every one of us needs correction every day. Uh, Every day, like Paul said, I die daily. I die if, daily. If if I can touch on that, that's such a powerful thing. It's something that I, I try to really hone in on. If we're all under the same banner of being corrected, there shouldn't be so much drama in getting corrected. We're all the same. Every right. the Bible says very clearly we all fall short of the glory of God, you know? God. So, and then and then the Bible is so beautiful to show us. The ones that the most high treasured, you know, in the scriptures, they fell short and had to be chastised. They had to make corrections. You know, the most powerful men in the Bible from Solomon to David, you know, uh, it's just it's all through the Bible. So why run from it? Run to mm -hmm. it. Run to it and get that correction. And I'll, I'll yield after this. When your car ain't acting right, you don't just keep driving it. You'd be like, I need to pull over before I get a blowout on the freeway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, it's like, you know what? and then I'm going to take it to my trusted mechanic, the physician, Hamashi Yaki Hawashai. You feel me? And he going to tune me up. He, you know, he's going to stand in the back. He's going to put it on. I'm going to get rid of that old tire, put on the new man, and I'm going to mob out, bro, with my Akiyam to the Passover. <laughs> you feel me? God, man. That's right. That's right. All that's praises. right. All praises to Most High. Come What's on. up, Pops? Khan. Uh, Philippians 2, verse 13 through 15. Rabbi Kasha. Khan, Khan. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 2, starting at verse 13. For it is Yahweh which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of Yahweh, without Rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among Sh Shalakia. whom Shalakia Uriel. Did you did you hear what he said? We have to do all things without murmuring and disputing. Mm -hmm. if you need, listen to what he's saying here. We That's, a cut in, to me. That's a cut. To <laughs> me. I'll be murmuring, King. <laughs> we need to do this without disputing. It shouldn't be a fight to go out and do the work. We shouldn't have to fight with our brothers to go out and to go out on the Sabbath to come to the feast yeah. to do any of these things that the Lord is asking us and commanding us to do. God, read on. That's right, verse fifteen again. That ye may be blameless and harmless, mm -hmm. the sons of Yahweh, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, mm -hmm. among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Mm -hmm. we. We, we we know what we're dealing with. 
We know we, we, we got all these spirits all around us. We know what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. But we have to let our light shine amongst them. That's and cool. we have to be that beacon set on the hill. But amongst all these, these spirits that's all around us. And as long as we're putting on the whole armor of Yahweh we should be all right. Come. He said he's going to be our shield all and right. our buckler mm-hmm. and our fortress and our refuge. So as long as we're doing what he says, he's going to be there with us. We're going to tuck under that wing. Come. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Come. That's right. And be lifted like wings of eagles and soar if we wait Come. on him. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. I mean, the, the, there's so many promises that the Most High God is telling us. That's why he says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor entered into the heart of man what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Now, think about that for a minute. I, yeah. I, I was watching... Um, I think it was the beloved brothers from IUIC, uh, the bishop, Bishop Nathaniel. He was talking about Powerful. Um, about that scripture, about if we can imagine it, the most high God is telling us if it if it can enter into our heart, right. then there's something way beyond that. Right. That the most high God has prepared for us right. because God. he says, nor entered into the heart of man, the mind, what what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. So think about this for a minute. Man can create movies and, and, and create rocket ships and airplanes and, and submarines and stuff like this. This is what man can come up with. We right. see movies with superheroes and, right. you know, going from galaxy and all, you know, all these different stuff. So imagine that the Lord says, if it came into your mind, I got something that you can't even imagine mm-hmm. for those like, that love him. Like blow your mind. Yeah. Uh, you know what just think about it. Yahweh Shai walking on water, just just coming through walls, healing the deaf and the blind and the sick, you know, just just defying science, defying gravity, right? Whoa. Defying all these things. King, is, I gotta uh, I gotta add to it if I can. Time. Uh, <clears throat> so me and my rib last night was really feeling the curses. I ain't gonna lie. We was like, man. What's it gonna take, you know, for us, you know, to, to move on up? You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, dang, it's like I'm feeling this curse, right? And um, and I told her last night, I was like, baby, everything in due time, in the Lord's time, and you know, and we're very blessed for what we have already. You know, we need to enjoy what we have, but you know, we have uh, you know, the scripture that says um, where there's no vision, the people perish. So her and I have. Uh-huh. Been, we have vision and we're like, OK, for that to happen, then we got to, you know, set this up and set this up. And I said, all in his time. Well, this morning, my rib, she sends me a picture. Right. And the picture is of we have some succulent cactus in the front yard. And for about a week, they had these big bulb knobs on them. Right. Big old like fleshy succulent knobs on them. And this morning they opened up and it was the most beautiful flowers I I, I seen. It was white with pink and on a big meaty cactus with spikes on it but it's big these beautiful flowers came out and the spirit came on me i was like look honey that thing opened up and bloomed in the time yahweh appointed it in the time, you know in the time he wanted to we can't force it to bloom we can't do it but now that it's here woo, it's blowing me away i'm looking at it i'm like it's beautiful and then at king you were saying the most high you know he he could go far beyond your thinking have you ever seen a duck bill platypus? On, 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 the nature, on the nature channel, that's it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's, it's a beaver with a duck bill. Okay? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Most I was like, oh, you thought you understood me. Well, I'll just throw this in the mix real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put and a twist like, on it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and you know, it's like uh, when like these uh, these colonizers came over to these new lands, they're seeing all these amazing plants, tasting amazing fruits and all that. Yeah, how was blowing everybody's mind? Even these heat, you know, like they see the gold, they get so damn greedy, they want to take it over and uh, oppress us and all this stuff. The Most High makes all these beautiful things, but not everybody can react and appreciate it. That's why the world, when it was handed over to wicked, they started destroying it. They started tearing mm-hmm. it up. Sister God. said. They start teaching that the law the laws are done away with, which is the worst lie that's ever been put out, <laughs> out there. So we have all this drama, and here we are converging tonight to wake up the congregation of the dead. And right. that's what's so beautiful because it's time. Just like that plant that bloomed, this is the time. I love how uh, King has said, 
this every time the most high going to step on the scene or make a move, he put the prophets out on front street and right. shine a light on them. You know, they're on your TV screen. You didn't think you was over there watching a video game on YouTube or something. And all of a sudden it came up congregation of the dead. What the heck is that? You click on it and you're like, damn, I didn't know the Bible said fear the Lord and keep his commandments a million times. Right. Right. That's right. This thing, man, this thing is real. I, all praises. All praises. All praises. Uh, if, if I may real quick, um, cause you, you know, you you saying that y'all was feeling the curses and, and, and right. you had to remind your rib like it's going to be OK. It's mm -hmm. going to be OK. You know, we're we going to go through some things, but the Lord, the Lord got us. Come you know, on. and it, it, it just reminded me of Job, you know, what he had to tell his wife, even though his wife, you know, she said, curse the Lord, you know, and all that stuff. But look what Job's response was, though. Hey, I got it, pulled Job on her last <laughs> night. I, I said, as a sales woman. <laughs> I, I love her to death, but I did say that. Hey, in the spirit, right? In the spirit. Job, Job 2, 9 and 10. So, you know, this is his wife speaking to him and Job's, re Job's response. It says, then said his wife unto him, does thou still retain thine integrity? Curse Yahweh and die. So, you know, the woman being the weaker vessel, she said, oh, we're going through it. We done lost the kids. We done lost our fortune. We done lost the, we done lost everything in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. She said, curse him. Look at Job's response. Verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of Yahweh? And shall we not receive evil? In wow. all this did not Job sin with his lips. And that's that's wisdom right there. Mm -hmm. He counted the cost. Mm -hmm. He understood that when he come to serve the Lord, to prepare his soul for temptation. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Gone you on. know, and that's what we have to understand. Everything that we see and possess in this life, it's it's Yahweh's. It's not ours. That's right. right. This is this isn't our creation. We're right. just stewards. Our wife, our children, the Most High God brought them into creation, not us. You know, yeah, Yahweh Shem Yahweh and that, and that and that's the thing is that we we have to be good stewards with the gifts that the Most High God has given us. And I and I'm I'm gonna live a testament that when you ain't a good steward. How fast the most high will rip it out from among Ooh, you. Me too, King. Uh -huh. you, we share yeah. that. We share that. Uh -huh. and, that, and, that and that and that's real. And that's why we got to stay in his love because it's it's a it's a win-win. Yeah. It's a win-win to, to just yeah. do what he says. Not only yeah. is he says he, he's gonna promise the kingdom to those that love him, but he's also gonna reward us too while we're here. He's yeah. gonna shield us and protect us and keep us in all our ways. But unto the wicked, is there peace for them? No, for the people. Uh -huh. yep. uh -huh. No peace unto the wicked. So that's why that's why we got to continue to do this work, continue to wake up our brothers, them dry bones, tell them to come to life, feed them this word, that bread, that bread of life, you know, and, and, and just continue to, 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 to teach them the best way we can until the day of your shine. Come on. Can, can I back you up real quick with that? I'm going to back you up. Look, look at um this um Genesis real quick. This is Genesis 50 and 20. We'll pull up on 19 first. <clears throat> and Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but mm. God meant it unto good mm. to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So uh, even when it looks dark like a Persian captivity and the decree was put out to destroy all the all the uh, Israelites, the Most High is right behind the corner ready to say, you know what? This is where I'm going to flip the whole table around and uh, tables are turned and Israel's going to rise. And then all these uh, other people, they're going to want to convert and serve out of the fear of the Lord. They were fear of, fearful of God's chosen people. So we just uh, have to hold in there, King. We just have to hold in there. And you know what? I like I, I even though I felt spoiled many times, like because the most high just grants us so much faith and gives us this understanding and allows us to rest and have peace beyond understanding. That doesn't mean the the everybody has it around you. So when they when they start losing it um or start getting you know scared or worried or going into a depression or you name it, whatever you're doing, you have to love them with tender love. You have to God. be honest with them. And that's something that I will cut myself right now. For the congregations, it's easy. But like for my banyams and for my ribs, I'm like, get on my back. Let's go. You know, I'm just on one sometimes. 
So I'm learning. Uh, con the congregation knows me as a very peaceful man, but like my bonds, I'm like a drill sergeant. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a different character. But you know what? It seems to be working with them to a degree, but I still have to learn to show tender mercies. So I'm, I'm one of them fathers that'll kiss my kids in public type of stuff. You know what I mean? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm one of them fathers that have both sides to the coin. So just all you austere men out there that girded up your loins, don't feel bad, but make sure you have the other side as well. Make sure uh -huh. you have tender mercies. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. And, and, and I love that transparency about you, Brock. You know, like I always tell you, like I said, the Lord got you in a gap. You know what I mean? Because like you, you, you say what needs to be said, you know what I mean? And, and I really appreciate that about you, Ock, you know, because a lot of brothers, you know, they, they know what needs to be said, but sometimes they just hold it. But you you bring it out, King, and I, and I love that about you. And uh, just, to, just to elaborate on that point to what you were saying, uh, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So no matter what we go through, remember, he says he declares the end from the beginning. The latter end of a thing is better than the beginning, right? So no matter what we're going through, it has purpose. It has reasoning behind it. And the Most High, he knows the outcome of this. Like it says in Jeremiah, um, was that Jeremiah 29? And let me pull that up real quick. The, the seven, is it seven? The one that uh, he, he has a... He know the thoughts that he has toward us. Come on, come on, yeah, 29 and 11. Oh, come on. Jer Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, mm -hmm. to give you an expected end. You see that? Because come on. it's the end of a thing that is better. And, it, it, you know, that's why we got to be focused on where we're going, not where we came from, because every one of us, Got an ugly history, right? An ugly history. Uh, but all praises. Respect that process. Uh, Sis put it on there earlier. It's a process. Uh, that's why the channel is called Success is Journey, because in the end, it will be successful if you heed his word, don't come back void. So, this process of being refined and doing all that, you got to get into it. You got to be uh, all about it. You know what I mean? If right. you ain't about it, then it'll be, a, it'll take, it'll, it'll jack you up, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it is a rough thing. Uh, what does it say in the scriptures that um, much wisdom brings sorrow? Bring much sorrow. Amashiach was a man of sorrow. Sweat and blood. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just go through it to get to it. You know? Uh, 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 Hold on to the hem of his garment. Like, it's, you know how I see it, King? And I say this to the nation. Nation, take this. If you ever been on a roller coaster ride, once you're in and the bars go over, click, 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 and they lock in, and that roller coaster starts going up. There ain't no turning back. You know what I'm so just just hold on. You're gonna he's gonna take your breath away. He's gonna drop you, and you're gonna be like ah. But, <laughs> but in the end, you'll be better for it. You'll be like, oh man, that was fun. Let's get on that again. Yeah. So, brother, so brothers, right uh, now, man, there are a lot of zealous brothers that have that spirit that that's kind of encouraging, and it's actually what you would call um, uh, contagious. You know, like you brothers right there, you guys out there with the contagious spirit, you know, brothers watching you bring it out as a family. That's one of the reasons why I love you guys so dearly is because you're an example to the nation on how a family's supposed to get down. Oh, yeah. praise. Likewise, King. Likewise. We love you too. Like yeah. we see we see the great works that the most high is doing with you too, King. All praises, God. all praises. God. In your bonds, I we see we see them young kings bringing it out. <laughs> yeah. He said you're gonna know all by their fruits. Oh, we got a precept in there by the strong Malak, uh, Brother Samuel, Psalms 40 and 11. Withhold not thou tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. You know, I'm a man now and I talk more, um, I talk more beautiful po poetry now. You know what I'm saying? Like you would think it's opposite. You know what I'm saying? And and I see the brother put this in here because he has children, too, and he's he's delicate with them. And then he has to be austere with them. You know, it's a balance. You know, we, we especially if you got them young men that are taller than you now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but I still give wow. them push ups. <laughs> Let me see. We got one more preset right here. Psalms 51 and one. Have mercy upon me, O God. Let me just stop right there. The, the love of uh, the love of the most high giving us mercy will obtain mercy 
showing mercy. Mm. Uh, I was talking with a with a captain of the Malachium today, and he was telling me about how um, you know the mercy that's been showed to him affected him so much that um, his relationship is just so beautiful because he's seen the mercy, he's seen the love. And it's a, it's a conversion, you know what I'm saying? Because what's the scripture say? He first loved us, right? He, he first loved, loved us. So we saw that love. We saw that. We saw him on that cross. You know, I remember um, the first time I really absorbed the cross in, the, in a way or, you know, his crucifixion in a way that changed me. Um, I actually took accountability that he was on there for me. You know what I'm uh, saying? As opposed to like just oh he died for everybody no homie he died for it. you're one of those that, the ones that he died for you know because they taught it to us in, in some kind of obscure way but once I understood that I put him up on there and he still loved me that was the most tender mercy I could have ever received in my life and that broke my heart and broke me and that's how I was able to have a contrite heart and come into the truth because I actually saw Hamashiach and that's real quick that's why Paul says we preach Hamashiach crucified. Because mm, that will break God. the heart of men. It'll break if you really stop and, and just stop and look at what happened to a righteous man in broad daylight who knew no sin and they killed him the way they did. And 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 just, just the atrocity of mankind. Never mind Israel being wicked, never mind Gentiles being wicked, the atrocity of mankind and what they did to the, to the king Hamashiach. If that don't break your heart, I would pray for the fear of the Lord and I would pray for that to come upon you. Come, that's right. That's right. That's right. All Con. positive. You got something positive? Con. Yeah, I, I I was well I, I was hearing Barack talk about that cactus and and the the trials and him and his you know his wife was going through. And if you could get James Uriel chapter one, just a couple precepts mm -hmm. starting at verse three. Con, three, con. two, six. Con, con. This is the book of James, chapter one, starting at verse three. Um, let me start at one for the context. Yeah, go ahead. Con, Bring it out. James, James, one from the top. James, a servant of Yahweh in the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting, con, my brethren. Con. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing God. this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God. That's right. That, Shalakia. So, yeah, even though we go through the trials and the tribulations and the temptations, the Lord is still with He's going to be with you. He's going to get you through it. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he brings you through them all. He's going to bring you through them. Read on. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So we just have to be more. We just have to be patient and just wait on the Lord, like David said, and be of good courage. And he's going to strengthen our heart. Right. Read on. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh. That give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And we know how we get this wisdom. He said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do the commandment. Huh. And then we got to have that patience and have faith. We have all these things. And he's and he's he's giving you all that. All the things of discernment, he's gonna give it all to you the more you seek his face. Read on. Right. Verse six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Read up on verse seven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So that faith <laughs> we do have to have. We do have to have the faith with the works. And long as as long as we're being obedient. That's the keys to the answer prayer. He's no. going to answer you. It's just a matter of time. And it's in, it's in his timing. Remember, he said a thousand years is like a day to him. Yeah. Even though it hasn't happened, he's going to answer you. Read. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we, we, just, we just have to be faithful. 
-hmm. And we have to be obedient. And we have to keep doing the law, statutes, and commandments and just keep our faith. And the mm -hmm. Lord is going to answer. He's going to answer. It's just when we go through the trials, we, it seems like we all been going through something. Right. It's like we, we've been going. I don't never like to say the stuff that the doctors be saying. To rock. Yeah. I'll, I'll say I'm under the weather. <laughs> I don't like to say the stuff they said. Because he mm -hmm. said, if any man speak, let him speak the oracles of Yahweh. So mm -hmm. I'll say I'm under the weather. I'm going through something. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm a, I'll be praying and trying to say what the Lord is saying. And then, and I, and thank you for your prayers. I, you know, yeah. the last time I was feeling a little down, Lord got me through it. Huh. We were going that's through it. a little something. But it, hey, that Sabbath, we was back out there. Huh, I saw and I was that. still feeling a little funny, but I said, you know what? I'm going out there. As soon as we got on the mic, hey, man, it was like I wasn't even feeling it no more. All praises. All, All praises. praises. Let, let me support you on that. You're the you're the flowering cactus tonight. It's in his time, <laughs> and, to, and tonight's uh -huh. the night for you to shine. And Elder, you've been bringing it out tough. We ain't trying to get in the way at all. I just, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. All praises. All praises. Mm -hmm. hey, in, in the cactus. Oh, ahead, girl. Girl. Ooh, there's a fire precept, James five and eleven. <laughs> uh, Malak Samuel, behold, we count them happy which endure. That's what we're doing. We endure it. That's right. We have heard of the patience of Job mm. and have seen the end of the Lord. Remember, he said it's a be it's better and latter in the end. That's right. Uh, God, the Lord God. is very pitiful and of tender mercy. God. Man. All praises. That's right. All praises. All, All praises. praises. And, and, and that's the thing. Patience. You know, even even the, the cactus analogy, you know, that, that cactus didn't just turn into that blossom. It was a process, you know. Yeah. It's uh, the parable of the sower thing. We got to be that seed planted in that good soil. And as that reference that we brought out earlier about in 1 Corinthians 15, 34 through 36, about how a seed has to die first in order for that growth. And that's representative uh, of us shedding that old man and becoming that new creature in Yahawashai, being grown uh, in him, being raised with him. So if you think about it, when a seed is planted, it cannot grow in sand it can't grow where there's no nourishment it has to be planted in good soil and then it has to be watered and continually okay. watered right and then it sprouts and then it grows up to the branches and then in time it produces what fruit, fruit. <laughs> but that's where the patience comes in but a lot of people want to hit that fast forward the escalators and the elevators they mm -hmm. want that fast food but that the, the most <laughs> that microwave exactly they want to hit that button on it but at the end of the day we got to be patient in this thing. We got to we got to run this race race with endurance. It's not a sprint, as we always says. It's a marathon. Right. It's God. a be marathon. Be anxious for nothing. That's let right. every God. day have its, let every day that you know. Don't worry about tomorrow. Um, you know, there's so many precepts. That's why we have to be in this word and keep bringing the word out. And I love how Ox said uh, it might sound repetitive. You know what? I would rather hear the word on repeat all day and then and then anything else. As Elder said the oracles. Bring them. Keep bringing the oracles. It's kind of like your favorite dish. I ain't gonna say no to that. You know what I'm saying? Bring that favorite dish on in here. I'm gonna tear that thing up. You can bring me seconds if you want. You know what I'm saying? God, God, that's right. That's right. And, and, it's, and just to, to go behind you, Barack. A lot of times when they don't want to hear it, it's because they're guilty of what it's saying at the time. But that's the beautiful thing about it. You can change once you hear it. That's the thing. You hear it, you you put it in your spirit, and then you start applying it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. They shouldn't get so angry at the messengers because that's the most high speaking anyway. Mm -hmm. they, they're not really mad at us, but it's like they, they look at us yeah. like we doing something. It's really, we just mess with We We messy rag. Yeah, we just out here just doing what he's saying to do. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And, and, and like you, like you said, pops, they have to hear it. They have to hear it. It's just re, it's repeated over and over. His word. Hear the word. Hearken, hearken, hearken. We got to receive God. that word because that's what's going to get us out of that congregation of the dead. Those who are in that congregation, that's because they're not receiving the word. They're not hearing the word. They're looking for the smooth God. words. They're right. making a covenant with death and with hell, like that's Isaiah right. said. But we got to come out of that and we have to follow the way. So if I may real quick, uh, I'm going to get Jeremiah 6 and 16 real fast. 
Jeremiah 6 and 16, because we got to get out of the way of the congregation of dead and come and follow the way, the truth and the life. Ah, so this is ah. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk mm -hmm. therein and ye shall find rest for your soul. Oh. But they said, we will not we will not walk therein. And that's the mindset of so many of our people. The Lord is literally showing them the good way, the correct way that leads to life and life more abundantly. OK, but they want to go their way, that way that leads to the congregation of the dead, that way that seems right unto a man. You see that? Mm -hmm. But that's why we got to continue on that right and correct path. That's why Yahweh said, follow me. What he's saying, John 10, if any man try to get in any other way, he's a what? A he's a, a thief and a robber and a thief. God. The door. <laughs> and that's what we got to do. Let me get one more, fellas. One more. One more. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48 and verse 17. Just elaborate on that point a little further. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. God. You see that? We got to stay in line with him. Just follow the, just keep following the lamp. Just keep following the way. Yeah, yeah I see that cactus. Wow. That's, that's, that's the one that y'all got? Hey, yes, that, thing, that thing wasn't bloomed yesterday. We woke up to that. Wow. Overnight, yeah, huh? Yeah, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a nice. sign. That's a yeah, sign got, right there. I got, an, I got another one too. Let me show you a, a close up. But yeah, it was just symbolic, you know. And the Lord is everywhere, you know. He's amongst all things, showing Himself. When we were talking about how our minds couldn't fathom, uh, look, look what He's done in so many different facets: the plant life kingdom, the animal kingdom, human beings, uh, the landscape, smells, taste. I mean, He just rocking our world. Like, hey, we're all adults on here. But even love making, who could even fathom what it, how how good it feels to make love and have a baby? Who could right. fathom any of that? Who he put that on? You know, he designed Ooh. the whole body like the Most High doing way too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you, know, with him? you feel me? <laughs> and look at his plagues. Oh my God, plagues where boils will swell up on you, plagues where frogs will come up on you. Right. Plagues where swarms will come up on you, famines dry. He could he could tear you up with heat, with cold. He could tear you up with noise. Right. He could tear you up with silence. He could tear you up in a cell. He could tear you up with nobody around, just a demon plaguing your brain. Bro, you don't know the son of the most high God. Get with this beauty that he's given. Let me show y'all one more picture real quick. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful, though, Ark. That, that's, a, that's a beautiful God. cactus right there. Oh, God. Yeah, it's that season where it's blooming around here in uh, you know, that that spring, that that summertime, uh, beautiful thing. And so, but it was it was so symbolic. It's like my rib needed it too. Uh, she took a picture and sent it to me, and the spirit just came on me because I was like, you know what? In its due time, it'll be beautiful. But when we looked at it, we saw a hummingbird. Y'all ever see them little tiny hummingbirds? Come on. Come on. The, hummingbird, the hummingbird kept kept uh, getting at it the last week. And my dad was here that, that last hour on Thursday. He's like, look at that little hummingbird. It's just all at that bulb. And I was like, I know that's going to that's gonna burst open and it's going to be tight. So let me show you this picture real quick, family. This is um this is a close-up on it. Let me yeah. see. Um, I haven't know. seen one in, out here in Washington, though. I've seen them in California. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually seen the hummingbirds out here. Come on. So that's a little bit of closer up, like right into it. That's what the hummingbirds want. They want to get all up in that crevice and get that good nectar. Okay. Right. And the most high set it up for them. So they was waiting for that thing to come. You feel me? They was like, man, we're going to be all up in that eating that. And so, uh, <clears throat> so now watch this. The cactus is already cool. I like cactuses, right? You know, us Mexicanos, we like cactus. You know what I'm saying? We like Nepales. But um, I noticed that. The hummingbirds come now. So now there's life all around that cactus. There's a beautiful flower. There's a hummingbird. There's a squirrel running. The most high is just gorgeous, just in a pot. Okay? Just wow. in a pot. The most high has a whole world, an ecosystem, just in a little pot. So I praise the most high. 
Kind. All praise, all, all praise. praise. All hey, praise. That's, that's your pa, King. That's that's a beautiful, beautiful plant right there. That's it. What he uh, said, he said, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? Uh, you uh, know, and, and it's those it's those little things that you know when you when you younger, and especially when the mind is in the dark, when you're still out there in the world, you don't appreciate that kind of stuff. Right. But when you come into the faith, you 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 appreciate the little things like that, just the most high confirming in the spirit. That's that peace. That he's talking about that he'll give us just just showing us little things like that just letting us know it's gonna be all right all praise you know like 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 how was i told uh uh when he's talking about the flowers in the field mm -hmm. right he says not not even solomon was arrayed as right. one of these precious it's beautiful. flowers right? mm -hmm. it's beautiful, beautiful flowers. Indeed. or yeah. like when you walk, you're walking through the hood and the crack the concrete's cracked and here there's a rose popping out Right. You know, a beautiful rose. Like, wow, I can't believe nobody destroyed this or crushed this. You kind of want to protect it or either clip it, take it to your rib, either or. It's something gorgeous you want to appreciate. Mm, you see that? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Uriel. Oh, no, Salaki. Salaki. I was going to say on a spiritual note, we're like those flowers that's blooming in the in the ghettos, <laughs> right? The poor, the meek of the earth, right? I'm going to give the Lord oh, a right. hand. And, and, oh, and, and, and oh, yeah. Man, uh, that's right. Oh, and sometimes we just gotta stop and smell the roses of our nation. You know God. Like right now. Let's not say a word. God. I would die of a call her lawyer mama now with your how about shama mashiach wama laka mashiach ya how is I would die. Babakasha, Father, Salak now, keep us, Father, forever in your glorious uh, will and way of the world and just manifesting all around us, showing the brotherly love, the sisters and everybody, Akwatiya, Mashbaka, the nation, just giving us so much. Let us just absorb it, receive it, and just give all praises. Call her law, Yom Abba, call her law. Amen. Just had to let it fly, Ak. Right? Amen. Praises, all praises. Amen. Yeah. All praises, all praises. Con, con, you got some pops? I, I was just gonna tell Barack, I'm, I'm, I got my garden going in the back. Con, <laughs> yeah, I was telling you, yeah, I'm waiting for all that to sprout. Yeah, you know, we we just put a, a, a blackberry oh. tree back there. Yeah, oh. some blackberries and raspberries, and then we we got some zucchini and some yellow squash and some olives. Quite a bit of stuff going, but we just waiting for the most side to bring it all up. You well, know, we when I get to come on, on out there, we have my be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> just make it happen, make it happen. And I got an apple tree back there and a pear. You know, we got some stuff going Man. back there. And the apples already been producing, but you know, we've been trying to wait for the two years to eat them. Yeah. So next year, you know, I did that one last year, the apple tree and the pear. So that's beautiful, Elder. I, I love hearing that. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say about <clears throat> my daughter? Um, she She's on five acres with her husband, and they were bringing over these big, giant zucchinis. They was bringing over all this, and she was like, man, we don't even go to the store no more. We just got chicken and <laughs> eggs. We got this and that. And that's what my, our ribs and our, my vision is. You know, Our vision is to, to get – we have brothers in the congregation that bought land. Uh, and we're very uh, grateful. We kept the pass over there, um, but we haven't done any farming there with him or anything. But um, we have other brothers looking to do that. Um, yeah, Con, let's, let's see what sis said. She said, um, I hope to have a house someday soon. I want a garden. You know what? I've been going uh, on YouTube and people on their balconies, they've been using buckets and they've been growing on their awesome. balconies, man. You know, yeah. last week there in front of our balcony, uh, we were in a two story spot. Uh, but it's beautiful, King, that you, uh, Elder, that you have that, you know, access and things like that. The most, it just shows the Most High just blessing you, just across. Yeah, the all okay. praises, all die. praises to the Most High. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially, especially with the famines and stuff. You know, what I mean, that's that's, yeah. that's start that's starting to come, and we've been hearing about these food shortages. Yep. And that's why that's why brothers need to open up their eyes and see what's really going on, because God. the Most High is giving us the warning signs. We we see the earthquakes, the tsunamis. Tornadoes just tearing up Kansas, the wars, right. the rumors of wars. You right. know, this is the perilous times, and, and we got to get it. this right. We got to wake up in these last days, like you brought out in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 earlier, that we, we have to awake unto righteousness. God. It's time to awake unto righteousness. 
Actually, and our people, our people are learning that we don't have to rely on uh, on Egypt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't have to rely on Egypt, man. I mean, Aki, there's. I remember when I was a youngster, uh, my mom got with this this one man, and he had a house because, um, uh, and in his backyard he had a pomegranate tree, he had a peach tree, and uh, an apricot tree. Don't you know I was the healthiest little boy in the neighborhood? Okay, <laughs> I would climb up that tree like a little monkey up there eating pomegranates in the tree. Okay, I remember climbing the peach tree. I was up in there and I was eating it, and I was like, I don't even watch the thing. They were just, they were just big, man, and just juicy. And I just be like, I had the healthiest body back then because that's all I did was yeah. eat that tree. <laughs> no GMO. Nothing. You was eating the real, the real deal. Tasting good, I tasting <laughs> good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um if i may real quick fellas um if i could touch on that scripture that you brought out earlier pops the first corinthians i i actually want to go back to that real quick um first corinthians 15 34 because th this is this is what we're trying to bring out tonight is that brothers need to come back to righteousness come back to the most high god and his son so that they don't have to be in that congregation of death so first corinthians 15 and 34 awake to righteousness meaning what at one point we were asleep. God. At one point we we our eyes was closed. It was we couldn't see what was really going on. Even though we were walking around, we were like the walking dead. Mm -hmm. So the Most High is telling us through Paul here. He says, "Awake to righteousness God. and sin no. not." Just like he just like he, he he told Mary, right? Mary Magdalene. He says, "Sin no more before uh, more evil come upon thee." Yep. It says, for, or before a worse thing come upon thee. Salakia. It says. For some have not the knowledge of Yahweh. I speak this to your shame. And that's the thing is when when we're in that dead state, we don't have the knowledge. So watch this. You get Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Salaki, let me pull it up real quick. Ecclesiastes 9, 4, and 5. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. It says, for to him that is joined to all the living... There is hope Con. for a living dog is better than a dead lion. You see that a dog, a dog is disgusting and nasty, but it's better for a, a living dog than for a mighty, mighty dead lion. This is what the comparison is. So when we're in that dead state, a living dog is better than that. Verse five, it says, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know Slaki, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. And I like to highlight it says, for the living know that's that knowledge. And what is knowledge? The law, mm -hmm. statutes, and commandments. Malachi 2 and 7, right? Mm -hmm. The priest's lips should keep knowledge, they should keep the law at thy mouth. Come. So that's what separates the living from the dead is that knowledge. That 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 we must obtain in the scriptures. And one more, brothers. I'm gonna get Second Corinthians. Go back to Second Corinthians five, verse twenty-one. And it reads: This is talking about Yahushai here. It says, "For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Yahweh in him." So Yahushai took on that flesh. And was buried and rose on the third day. In the same way that seed has to die and come back to life, once it flourishes, Yahweh became that for us so we can be raised with him. But we have to obtain that knowledge, that wisdom and understanding, as the scripture says. Otherwise, we ain't going to know nothing because the right. dead know nothing. That's right. I got it. Um, I, praise you. I do want to touch a little bit on that fire scripture you brought out, King. Let me... um. Share the screen so everybody can see it. Um, where it says, uh, for to him, and let me just call it out real quick, Salakia, uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 4. For to him that is joined, joined, okay? So you got to be in Hamashiach, but then also joined to, uh, joined to all the living, there is hope. That when you're in the congregation of the living, as King brought out earlier, the flip side of the congregation of the dead, there is hope. Right. Look, at, let me show, let me show you something in here to, just to show you the hope in the congregation. This is from Sister. She said, "At Dorothy Branch, stay in the faith, and He will increase in His timing." Mm. It's kind of like the theme tonight. Even though we see all these dead people walking around and things like that, 
Um, I don't know if you guys in, in California, we have what they call banana stalks and banana stalks um, in the winter, they die. Like they look terrible. Like if they're in your yard, it looks like you got a bunch of dead, plant, big old dead plants. But in the spring and in the summer, they're shooting up big, green, gorgeous banana stalks, you know. Um, so when I saw that in the first time, because I, I wanted to get some, I was like, man, those are tight. It makes your house look like the jungle, you know, put those around your yard. It looked like you in the Congo, you know. Um, I was like, those are tight. And then I remember in the winter, I was like, those are ugly. <laughs> like those things are all dead. It looks like you just got dead, dead plants in front of your house. Um, so verse four. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Now, we're bringing this out about the congregation of the dead. We have hope for them. They're just like that. They're like that plant in the winter, in the darkness. They're just they're just so distraught. Remember, our people suffer for lack of knowledge. Right. We've been beat down. We've been lied to. We've been oppressed. Uh, we play ourselves. We don't take our thoughts captive. We're just toe up and toe back. So because we know that, we ask Abba, Abba, give us the right precepts, the right understanding, the right place, the right spirit. And boom, we hit it. And next thing you know, the nation's growing. So God. in his good time, hallelujah, but for a living dog is better than a dead lion. You know what? There's people in this earth right now. They're lions. They, they feel powerful, but they're dead. God. They got Money, they got their cars, they got their record labels, they they running through all these uh scandalous women, you know, and they just they're a dead lion. Mm -hmm. Not knowing, right. especially you know what's sad? That's a lot of Judites. Those yeah. are real lions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Those are real lions that don't know that they're actually kings that mm -hmm. don't know, and that's what the excitement for us, and, and I know you too, family, when you wake them up to who they are, and you mm -hmm. know, they can have hope and life more abundant, as Elder was touching on. And just, you know, bring Christ to them where Christ says, if you had listened to Moses, you'd listen to me, meaning we're on the same page up in here. on uh, keeping the laws. Matter of fact, these ain't Moses's laws. These are my laws. These are the most highest laws. For that's his right. People. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. All praises. All praises. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, I, I got a precept, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to get uh, John 3. Uh, 19 to 21. Con, con. Con, con, three. This is the book of John, chapter three, starting at verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, mm. and men love darkness rather than light wow. because their deeds were evil. Mm. That, yeah, how, Shalak, yeah, yeah, how is saying the reason why? They don't want to come to the light. And this is why we have to we have to continue to pray. We do have to pray. Barack, he said it. We got they have hope. Mm -hmm. They do have hope. The ones that are appointed to salvation. Con. They have hope. They just have to turn from their ways and then they'll be healed. Con. Read on. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Mm -hmm. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Mm. And, and so a lot of them, they, you know, when they're in that, they just don't want to come to the light. And they don't want to, you know, a lot of them, that's why they don't even want to come around us. Because they be, oh, those guys are going to preach to us. Right. They want to keep going. You know, that's why they, once they hear it, that, you know, the spirit comes out. Those spirits come mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And they, they sometimes, you know how they come up? And like it, they'll hear that voice, and then they'll come up and hear something. But then they hear something that that cuts their spirit. Right. Then they out of there. Right, mm -hmm. right. But they know what it's they know that what the Lord is saying is is what's right. But then it's mm -hmm. something that just cuts at them. So then they flee. Mm -hmm. It cuts their spirit. Mm -hmm. They get cut in the heart, and then that's when they run. Mm -hmm. right. Read on, verse twenty one. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in Yahweh. Con. So it, it's clear. So if they're doing the things that Yahweh is saying, they're not going to be running and hiding. They're going to come and they're going to manifest themselves. They're not going to be trying to be in the closet, you know, because we can't hide anyway. The Lord, right. <laughs> he says, it's like uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, how he, he says how 
there is no creatures hidden from his sight. That's right. But all things are open to the neck and eyes of him to whom we Man. must give an account. That's we right. can't hide. So when yeah. I first heard that one, I thought the time when we was out there doing the drugs and doing all that stuff, hide in, in the house with the curtain set. I was like, wow, the most high was seeing us? Man, it wasn't getting away with none of that. Mm-mm. Back in them days, man, I was feeling so guilty. I said, oh, man, he he got it. He had us the whole time. But he actually had his hands on us. Come on. Like you were saying earlier, he declares the end from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So he already knew, like, okay, I got you. Come he on. already knew what he knew what everybody was going to be doing. He knew. Right. He already knew that. Come on. And you can sense it in your spirit when he's starting to deal with you on a, like when he starts tightening up because he tests the reins of your heart, right? I, that's God. how I came, that's how I really came into the truth is when I realized that um, when I was doing things that I knew were wrong, right? I was like, God. I thought you said you had the fear of the Lord in my head. You know, in my head, I was like, where's your fear of the Lord here? <laughs> you know, I was like, your fear of the Lord ain't here. And that's when it really hit me. It was like, you know what? If I really had fear of the Lord, I would turn and repent. And that's when I realized that scripture that says, uh, uh, those who say they love me, but don't keep my commands is a liar. And that was uh, my cut. Now I was done after that, King. Elder, once that hit me the way it's supposed to hit a human being, uh, a child of Yahweh, once that hit me, then I realized, you know what? I, I can't be a liar because liars get cast in the lake of fire. And he'll say, God. go for me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And all the precepts started smacking me around that had been laid down in front of me. Now, all of a sudden, they just lined up. Kind of like when you put, we, you know, mean you wear glasses. Like, if we put them <laughs> on, we could see straight. And it was that God. moment of clarity, what they call an epiphany or what John would call a revelation. You know God. what I'm saying? You and had that, that revelation on, mm-hmm. and and then you started to humble down, uh-huh. and then he started really dealing. With, once you had that humility and humbled down, he really started to deal with you. And now look at look at you, oh, look, at, look at the increase now. Look at you, oh, hello, young. all praises, <laughs> all praises. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so tangible, King. It's so real. We have to just keep shining that light because, like I said, this is contagious. Because we saw brothers doing this, Con. God. You know, we saw brothers doing this, and and we're just like, man, Father God, they had this desire in us by Hashem and Mashiach, and then, you know, we were seeking sincerity, we were seeking the truth, seeking righteousness, Um, and the scriptures talk about those who seek him, you know, he's diligently, you know, he'll come and sup with us, you know, he'll come Uh. and make bread with us and do this, and and then after that, you fall in love, and it reminds me of that scripture, where shall we go? You got eternal life. Right. We're, we're already down the roller coaster. We already got off the ride. We we know this Ooh. is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So praise your God. God. Like, like, like Paul said, the, the night is far spent. Mm-hmm. The day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. There has to come a point yeah. in every, every man or woman's life where they have to make that decision. Are they going to choose life or are they going to choose death? I mean, you, you said it, Barak. Yahweh I said, get away from me. You work. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. So how do we know him? The scriptures tell us how we know him. He that say, if I know him and keep it not my commandments, what is he? A liar. A liar. And the truth is not in him, right? Mm -hmm. So on the flip side of that, we know him if we obey. Like the elder brought out earlier, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command thee. And it really comes down to that. We got to do away with the carnality, with the flesh, and start walking according to the spirit, like like the scriptures tell us to. Matter of fact, can I grab that real quick, y'all? Romans eight, real fast. Bring it out, because that that's the thing right there. That's really the hang up is the flesh. That's what that's what's keeping brothers down is is is, is the the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's really what that's keeping them in that 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 dead state. So this is Romans eight, and I'm gonna start at. Let's start at verse, you know, like, like uh, Naquan. You'd be like, oof, this whole thing is good. <laughs> right? right? Yeah, it's like uh, this whole chapter is good. Yeah, yeah. that brother, he'd be like, this whole thing is good. I'm uh, yeah, I'm going to start at verse, <laughs> I'm going to start at verse 5, yeah. Roman, Romans 8, yeah. verse 5. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. And we know the spirit is talking about the word, right? The uh, word is spirit. 
verse six, it says, for to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. So what is what is what is what is Paul telling us here through the spirit of the Lord? He says those who want to live according to the flesh, they're going to die. It's, it, it's just going to happen. That's that's just the truth of it. But those who are applying what the word is saying, they will have life and they will have peace. Verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can be. So when we have a carnal mindset, the Bible literally says we are enemies with the most high God. Verse God. eight. So then they slack it. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Hamashiach, he is none of his. As we just as we uh, brought just brought out. Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh. Verse 10. And if Hamashiach be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And that's that refine, refining that we must go through. That inner man has to change. So when Yahweh returns, we could be changed in that twinkling of an eye. Verse uh -huh. 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. And that's what the yeah. Khan, that's yeah. what you was bringing out, Pops, earlier in Ezekiel 37. Can these dry bones live? Mm. And if they uh. hear that word, they can be risen to life with Hamashiach, Yahweh. But for those who denounce him, they reject him, they don't receive this word, they will remain in that congregation of the dead. But the Lord is promising life and life everlasting to those who receive it mm -hmm. you see that oh. mm -hmm. we got a precept. got we got a precept in here uh elder put in romans 9 and 13 neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto yahweh as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto god Con. Con, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful one. I think he meant, um, I don't think that was Romans or let me see, what, what scripture did he call on that? He called uh, Romans 9 and 13. Let me see. Let's double check it. Let's confirm yeah. it. Yeah, that's as it is written. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. <laughs> oh, 9 and 13. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> But hey, that's a fire script, though. Let's find out what scripture it is. Neither yield you remember. Like some Ephesians. God, neither you. Let me see that. It might be Colossians. Let me see. That might be Corinthians there huh. that he pulled. I think that is that's Corinthians. Oh, the brother meant Romans six and thirteen. That's what he meant. Oh, okay. Romans God. six and thirteen. Oh, Upside down nine. Right? Yeah, he put it right there. He meant six. Con. Con, con. All, All present. That's a fire All precept, right. though. Yeah, that's on point right there. Mm -hmm. Because you're in, and that's, you know, I'm going to actually um do a part two to this um because it's just so powerful. I don't want to take anything from this. I want, you know, sometimes we can overfeed, you know, the flock. Just like that plant out there, we can't overwater it. Cactuses, they only want so much water. You put too much on them, he'll be soggy and fall down and he'll be done. Um, right. Same thing. And um, but tonight, though, um, I want y'all to continue to bring it out because the spirit that y'all bringing out is what I prayed would come out tonight. Um, I'm always encouraged and excited to do something with y'all because the spirit that y'all operate in is so tangible that you got to give it its opportunity to just build. And so, you know, occasionally I'll pick like a different topic and there's brothers that'll be like, oh, I like that topic. That's it. That's how I like to do the work. I like to let brothers pick what topic because the most high has given them some specialties in this walk. You know what I mean? Right. Focus in this walk. Um, there is one scripture that I wanted to just share real quick in regards to that. Um, when we were talking about the congregation of the dead, 
the flip side is the congregation of the living and, and precepts were brought out. I want to bring out this Ephesians real quick. Let me, sh let me share this screen and show this. Um, I'm not going to bring too much out tonight. I, I really, like I said, I want to get out of the way and let the fire come through the strong brothers, but watch this real quick. Um, Ephesians 5 and 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So the flip side of that congregation of the dead is this congregation of life by Hashem Mashiach. Uh, we're going to also get 2 Corinthians. For I am jealous. And this is talking about him presenting this glorious church. You know uh. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, in church. And if you see the picture, uh, one of the sisters asked me, she goes, man, that's a scary picture. What's up with that crazy picture? If you look at the picture that I put <laughs> for the thumbnail, the, the, the guy has a priest, a priest hat on and priest garment on, but he's rotten and dead. And it reminds me of Hamashiach who says, you know, you guys are like a, a, a sepulcher. You know what I'm saying? Uh, beautiful on the outside, rotten on the inside. So Ooh. let me get this 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. Mm -hmm. So uh, Paul is saying, bro, we got to get cleaned up so we, we can bring you to Hamashiach. And he's the one that's going to clean you up. See, I may present you as a chaste version to Hamashiach. So he, we get the blueprint. We get the plan, we get the laws, we get the statutes, we get the commandments, we get all of this, we get the spirit, we get the rakah, we get all this, right? So that we can be presented as a chaste virgin, right? A uh. chaste virgin. And that's what the flip side of the congregation of the dead is. And I yield. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh. All praises, all praises. You got something, Pops? Uh, if you want to get John 8, verse 12. I have to go back to you always, guys. Mm -hmm. John 8, verse 12. God. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Yahawashai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So that, that I mean, it's clear. Anyone that's followed him, they're not going to walk in darkness. They're not going to be those dry bones. They're going to be illuminated. They're going to have that light of life. And you want to jump over to uh, Isaiah chapter, I believe, 60, or is it 61? Because Yahushai, Yahush he's just speaking through all the prophets. It's the same thing being said. Yep. He was saying it over and over. That's why he was telling the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I have told you this from the beginning, but you wouldn't listen to me. Because they were asking, well, who, who are you? They was asking him, you know, how does this man know so much, but he's never been to school? All these different things. How do you get to know all this? Yeah. Because I've told you from the beginning. They didn't realize that that was him. Right. He was there in the spirit. That's in right. In the time of Moses. That was him. In the time of Ezekiel. That was him in the time of Jonah. Isaiah the prophet. All of them. That was still him. And Elijah. That was him. Coming to volume you, of the book. You got that one, Uriel? Which one are you thinking? Isaiah 60. Verse 60, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Con. Con. This is the book Isaiah, chapter 60, from the top. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold... The darkness shall cover up the earth and gross darkness the people. Shalakia, Uriel. Mm -hmm. See, this is what it is. As long as they're in that congregation of the dead, they're walking in the darkness. Christ is the one that's going to give them the light. Mm -hmm. They're going to stay in the darkness as long as they stay in that sin. Right. Read on. Reading on, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, mm. and his glory shall be seen upon thee. But the ones that are yeah. keeping, keeping those laws, the statutes and commandments, they're going to see that on you. And then you wonder why they some they may come and approach, 
and then some don't. Because when they don't want to come, that's because they in that darkness. They in that mud. That's right. And you know, some and then they're curious. The ones that come up, we we see so many different spirits, mm-hmm. but we always have to deal with them accordingly. Right. According to how they come. Right. Because they it'd be all kind of spirits. Mm-hmm. But the Lord is saying what it is. It's clear. Mm-hmm. That light, he is the light of the world. Anyone that's following him, they're not going to walk in darkness, but they're going to have the light of light. Right. So right. if they come back to the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, they're going to be illuminated. They're going to have the, that light. But otherwise, oh. they're, they're, they're just walk. they're, they're going to actually, they're, the ones that don't know him, they're just in the darkness. They're in the congregation of the dead. The ones that are playing around and they're in this and don't want to do with the laws, their light is going to go out. They got to huh. keep that oil burning, he said. Right. If they don't continue doing it, they just going to just go out. The light's going to go out. They got to keep that oil burning. Right. That's, right. That's, why, that's why we have that uh, Passover every year tells us to take account of our, you know, and look at ourselves and get the leaven out because you think the people that are in a congregation of the dead think they're in a congregation of the dead? They don't. They think they're in a huh. congregation of the living. They don't even know. They have no one. He, like even in the nation of Israel, we have brothers in camps and things like that, and um, they can come on and they'd be like Shalom, Barakatha, this and that, this and that. <laughs> when you meet them behind the scene, you're like, man, bro, different, different like, character. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and so they're but they're doing the work though. They're they're just like a Pharisee. They're out there t- talking the law, you know, fringes, beard, Dimitri, everything, and it's just wild because I love this verse right here, verse two. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. You know what that means? That means this is above you. He's going to arise upon thee. He's That's picking right. you. He's going to choose you. And again, this is the best why I couldn't stop the clap. And his glory shall be seen upon me. And now uh, when I see brothers like y'all, I see the glory of the Lord upon you. You feel me? Hallelujah. 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 I cannot, All leave, praise you. I cannot leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be at you again to do another class. I'm going to be at you again to jump <laughs> on the Zoom. I'm going to be at you because uh, the scripture says to wear the steps out, right? That's right. All praise That's right. All praise to the most high. That's right, King. And, it, and I got doubled up when I met Uriel. He came with an elder who happened to be his father. You feel me? He came with an extra <laughs> bonus. That's my praises. elder now. You feel me? So hallelujah. All hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's, it, it's not always easy. You know, we... You know, a lot of like the elder was bringing out, there's a lot of spirits, you know, but like the Bible says, light has no fellowship with darkness, uh, you know, uh, and, and like he brought out John three, you know, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than the light. Right. That's the thing. You know, a lot of brothers, they come in and then they start to flicker. Mm-hmm. They start to flicker. They're they're calm. Nasharal, and today, like you said, Barack, but but really they're like Pharisees. It, it, it's on the surface because inside they're like dead men's bones. Mm-hmm. You know, it, right. it's, and that's, and that's the thing is that we got to refine that inner man. The inner man has to be renewed. Um, let me get revelation two and five. And then I'm going to uh, jump over to Romans, Romans seven and 22 real quick. So this is revelation two and five. Cause you was talking about how that light will go out. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen mm-hmm. and repent and do the first works mm-hmm. or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out mm-hmm. of his place, mm-hmm. except thou repent. So mm-hmm. the most high, as the elder always says, he'll blow your candle out. Yep. If, if, <laughs> if you, if you're not walking circumspect, if you ain't taking his word seriously, mm-hmm. he'll blow that candle out. So what is that really going into? Let me get that real quick. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 20, I think it's verse 27. Let me see real quick. Con, yeah, after, probably. after you pull that, I got to back you up one on that too, King. Yeah. Con, con, all praises. Con, Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, mm. searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mm. They, see, that's why I said we have to refine that inner man. That has to be transformed, that renewing of the mind. That's con. what the scripture says. Because if not, that candle will be blown out. It will be put out. So we got to stay on fire. And the only way we're going to stay on fire in this thing is if we're keeping those lamps, them, that oil in the in the lamps. We got to keep it trimmed. 
Don't be like those five virgins that waited till that day saying, give me some of your oil. Nope, it's too late now. It's too late uh, now. You should have been on fire the whole time. Right, you should have right. been bright. You should have been shining like the like the Lord told us to do. So, but yeah, y'all got it, Kings. I got I got Matthew three and eight. I want to get this bad boy for us just to back you up, Kings. That was that was in the spirit. Let me um grab this real fast for us. Come on, and grab this bad boy. Okay, con. So just to back that up because I was so in the spirit. It says Matthew three and eight. Uh, but we're going to get it in context. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Mm. See, So a lot of us was on point. You know what I'm saying? It says all Judea and Jerusalem. It said then went out to him Jerusalem. So, you know, we can turn and repent. It, you know, our people can do right. And it says in all the region about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and mm. Sadducees, nothing new under the, under the sun, mm -hmm. come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Mm. What brother had brought out. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Repent. God. That's and, right. And think not to say with uh, within yourselves, like, don't think it. You know, if you thought if you thought you was going to think this, don't think this to right. yourselves. We have Abraham to our father. Mm. <laughs> For I say unto you that Yahweh is able of these stones mm. to raise up children unto Abraham. And God. now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit, that will be the congregation of the dead, right. is hewn down. And cast into the fire. God. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And hallelujah. That's yeah, hallelujah. We got to want oh, him to baptize us with that fire to get these impurities off us, to purge, to purge the leaven. Um, and real quick, so I was writing some notes. I'm just going to go a little bit into this. Leadership is on review right now. This congregation of the dead, camps are on review right now. Uh, his eyes are on all of us. We all are right. on review. The That's whole right. nation is on review. Huh. Each individual plays a significant, important role and part. That's why we rehearse the righteous acts. Mm, God. So we can come off the bench as the starting five, Calling plays, lobbing alley oops to my ox all the way out to Seattle, and being uh, and be and reigning by Hashem Amashiach while Malachi Hawashai. And then I'll end on this, and then I'll hand it back. First Corinthians 12, this is verses 12 through 27. It says, For as the body is one and hath many members, this is what we got to remember. The body has many members, like there's, right. there's specialties, there's blessings upon each brother and sister. And all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. And we're in the body of Hamashiach, Khan. We're oh, like, God. they couldn't understand when he said, you got to eat of my flesh. You got to drink of my blood. They couldn't fathom that thing. But we fathom, right? For by God. one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And we want to be in the congregation of the living. So it's by Hashem Hamashiach, law, statutes, and commandments. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. And that's what I'm noticing in congregations. At the Malachium, I encourage all the, the all the brothers, even some of the elders, I, I say, uh, Elder, I want you, I would like you to bring out some of the things you were telling me about, some of the new Malachs coming in. I'm like, you know what? You're a fervent king and you have a lot of understanding in this portion. Uh, why don't you bring this out? You know, um, let, the, how you do it? And sometimes they have to build confidence. Sometimes they have to become um, uh, conduits and vessels when they didn't even realize that that's what the Lord was calling them to do. You know what I'm saying? We're like, nah, king. Um, no, nah, you're an integral, beautiful, uh, your pa spirit. So come on, come on board. Uh, let me read 16. And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? No. If the whole body were an eye, where were their hearing? 
Oh, Salakia, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If really? the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now the, now hath Yahweh set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. So mm -hmm. that's what I love. I love that we're, we're, we're pleasing him by all of us rising up. All of us, you know, bringing out this word. All of us bringing our light. Um, brothers opening up their uh, homes. Brothers doing certain things, making the fringes. Uh, uh, street preaching, uh, live live broadcasts, you name it, whatever the most high, we're all filling the gaps in the voids. And if they were all one member, where were, where were the body? Verse 20, but now are they many members, yet but one body? And that's what we have to realize is that the congregation of dead, that they're not one. They're not in Hamashiach as one moving forward. Uh, there's contention, there's all this extra drama, there's, you know, uh, rises for power, want to be the head brother in charge, uh, uh, exploiting loyalty, mm -hmm. exploiting uh, sincerity. There's some sincere brothers getting connected with some unsincere brothers. Right. So this is the type of stuff that irks me because as a Malachium elder, I get brothers from all kinds of camps, and I'm not going to name any names, and even brothers that have been in our camp when we aired, when we first came in, they might go somewhere else. So there's a lot of mess in Israel, and we have to really try to recognize that it takes us to guard against being a congregation of the dead, where we're uh. staining and hurting people, where we're not being, um, where we're muzzling the oxes, where we're not really um, edifying and, and loving each other and esteeming each other above ourselves. Mm -hmm. Verse verse 21, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor uh. again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. 22. Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. So I, there's some people sitting in congregations and and, 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 and and they're not seeing that they can be raised up to do the work of Yahweh, right. um, that, they, that they're special and that, that the Most High has something for them in that body. Verse 23. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, Upon these, we bestow more abundant honor. So it's like almost, you know, backwards, like the brother that's, you know, when you open up a school and he's cleaning the toilet, like the UPK, even though, you know, they have their error, there's, they have a lot of things in their congregation that teach humility and, and do this. And they honor these people that do this work, you know, that come and clean up. Um, if you've had a, a, a fat congregation at the house, you know, you'll see brothers come and help clean, help set up, help do all that. I honor them more because they're considerate, because they're they're um, they're willing to physically do something rather than just want to be a face or a voice. They want to actually put their hands to the plow in other ways. Bring that and, out. Mm -hmm. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having mm -hmm. given more abundant honor to the part which lacked. That there should be no schisms in the mm -hmm. body, That's right. but that members should have the same care. Here we go, one for another. Oh, so yeah. That's right. God. God. yeah, there's a lot of puffed up in our nation, mm -hmm. and um, you know, rather than having what the scripture says, um, same care one for another. And here we go, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with mm -hmm. it. Or right. one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Come. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So I just love that so much because that's what a body of the living looks like. Mm -hmm. They have all God. these personalities, everybody's all cylinders, if you will, all um spark plugs are firing. You feel me? Mm -hmm. The right. whole body is just extra nutty and fruity and glossy mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. on point with everything. Uh, one more real quick, Joel 2 and 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah, shouldn't be people in the congregation, you know, feeling like they can't, you know, um, uh, let their light shine, feeling ashamed because they try to bring a scripture out or, you know, somebody's mocking them or whatever. Believe it or not. That goes on in Israel, you know. Mm -hmm. there's, there's people who like to tower over people and abuse power, and they do, and it's mm -hmm. ugly in Israel. 
God. It's, it's, there, there was a brother that came into the congregation and we loved him. We went out and we uh we went out to um to do a camp and we supported him and we did all these beautiful things. And and, and since then I've heard the brother's been struggling and all that, and we pray for him and we love him. Doors open if you want to come back. But um it was real wild because he was really struggling with the fact he wanted to be the head brother in charge. And I pulled his card, you know, and I, and honestly, as loving as I am, I'm very austere with somebody playing games. Um, I said, you would like to be the head brother in charge, huh? And this was, he was his first day at camp. He's like, hey, uh, I, uh, I, I should take over the Malachium. And I was just listening to him like, listen, hear what he has to say. So you can see he's, he's revealing himself. And I said, okay. I didn't even sweat him. I said, why don't we go to the congregation and ask the congregation if they want you to be the head of the Malachio? Right, and he right. was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Okay, so you just want me to give the Malachio over to you and you just, you, it, bro, I care for these sheep. I, I'm not just throwing them to you. I'm right. like, listen, your works will prove whether or not. And in, in here, there is no head. Hamashiach is the head. I That's might right. be the head. One of the things, but a brother might come. Shoot, I had a 20 year old brother come to me and teach me how to keep the Passover the way we keep it now. And he was, and I'm old enough to be his dad. So I, I learned that the Most High will use anybody like little Daniel and Susanna. Uh, you know, look how young Jeremiah was, the prophet, mm -hmm. when he came on the scene. Right. So I, I've got life more abundant now because I know the most high who he sends to me. All I need to just is to look and see what the most high is doing. And it just makes me feel good. Um, and then last but not least, I'm going to bring out this Psalms 45, seven. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. God. We have to hate this, this evil that comes into our congregation that mm -hmm. makes us the congregation of the dead. Mm -hmm. um, it says, therefore, Yahweh, thy God hath anointed thee. Watch this with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. If the Most High wants to put a spirit on you and raise you up, so be it. Who are we to hold you down? That don't make no sense. That right. don't make no sense at all. Come into the camp and shine bright. Please mm -hmm. do your thing. And that's what right. I want to encourage the nation. Bring, you know, bring it out. Do it. Let your fire shine. Let your light shine mm -hmm. so you can be a light to the men. Um, and, then, and then right here I got there could be a dead spot or a blind spot. That's why we purge the leaven every year. That's why we self-evaluate. Psalms 4 and 4 says, sit in awe and um, and sin not. And, you know, and, and see how the Lord is working. Uh, we always take in our thoughts captive um, as Eve should have in the garden. Right. This is how we prevent ourselves from being in the congregation of the dead. We have to take our thoughts captive. He should have had in the garden. David should have had on the balcony. He should have took his thoughts captive. Solomon should have took his thoughts uh, captive when his wives were making their requests. Uh, homes are congregations and the heads have to evaluate, then make the necessary adjustments. I'm making many now in our diets, in our time spent, in our money spent. Uh, there's a lot of lopsided stuff in the nation. And so that's why I do classes like this and call on brothers like this, because we really have to go inside and do some strategic work. And whenever we see something, um, I know you guys counsel brothers and sisters. I know you guys have brothers in the congregation. And as you try to bring brothers and sisters in the congregation, you're going to always have to fine tune, take them to the scriptures. This is the lifestyle. What did King bring out earlier? Reproof is the way of life. So right. with that, I really feel like that's how we can avoid being in the congregation of the dead is by mm -hmm. you know, always giving that uh, preventive maintenance, if you will. You know, uh, check in, pulse check in, brothers and sisters, and seeing if it's right and seeing what they need. And um, yeah, King, go ahead and continue bringing it out. I just wanted just to say this that was the spirit behind me that we have so much to offer as a nation. Um, in our congregations is where it starts. You know, we're going to be the lead. We're going to be the lights. So we got to keep these congregations from falling into that dead. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some brothers that just preach like parrots. They just keep saying the same thing, yelling at Esau, playing a game. It's just like, it's like they're in a congregation of dead either. There's really no brotherly love. It's just out there to get views and talk crazy. And it's just foolishness. And it means a lot to me because they probably started out sincere. God. Uh, and, and that's the thing. And uh, and that's oh. the thing. Um, 
a lot of brothers need to realize all of all all of Yashra, including ourselves. You know, we have to be a body that's working together, mm-hmm. together. You know what I mean? Because uh, when one when one member of the body is affected, the whole body feels it. You yeah. know, and, uh, and that's the thing. You know, I, I always say it: if if all the weight is on one leg, the body's gonna fall apart. It's gonna feel. It's gonna be lopsided because it can't take all that weight. So that is why the Most High has given the body gifts. You yeah. know, you know, some apostles, some teachers, some pastors, etc. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we have to work together and brothers need to be willing to receive correction. There has to be respect for brothers and sisters. Um, yeah. Let me let me get this precept real quick, because huh. there there is a lot of hypocrisy going on in Yasharala. And um, and it's it, I hear all the camps, you know, and, and that's how, you know, that's how, you know, it's a spirit. Right. That's how, you know, it's a spirit, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and the most high in these last days, you know, he's he, he's revealing who's who. You know, right. so this God. is this is Sirach 1, verse 29 and 30. It says, be not an hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so God discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. So and, and, and that's it. It's, it's just the reality of what some brothers are walking in. They're walking in that spirit of preeminence. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. who has the preeminence? Yahawashah. Yahawashah. Uh, that, that's it. You know, we, we can't get above him. And we always have to remember the focus and what the goal is. It always has to be in honor of Yahawashah and Mashiach Yahawashah. We bring it out every single Sabbath. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Everything we do in word and in deed has to be in honor of Yahweh Mashiach Yahweh Not in honor of ourselves, not our bank accounts, not our wife and children, but of the Most High God and His only begotten Son. And God. if I if I may, I think this might be a good um, good one to close with, unless you got some pops that you want to bring out. But um, oh, what you just brought Barack, out, Barack. No, Barack had made me think of a precept in Joel 32, and we could just get that one before that one, Uriel. Joe 32 God. and started verse 7, I believe. Joe 32 and about, 7. He was, he was saying something. It doesn't, you know, Christ said, and a little child shall lead them. God. So it's not about the age. Right. Barack made a good point. It's not about the age. It's about, you know, if they have the spirit and willing to do the work. Right. Really, mm-hmm. that's what this is about. Right. If that spirit, they have that spirit and they want to do the work with a pure heart. That's so, right, I- so it made me think of Joel 32. You want to read that and then you go to that. Con, con. This is the book of Job 32, verse 7. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. I but mean, there is- with Salakia, the older men, you know, like me, yeah, I'm up there. You know, I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm pushing 60. You know, but that doesn't mean a thing if you don't know your Hawashai. Mm-hmm. He said, they should speak, and the multitude of years, they should teach wisdom. Mm-hmm. Read, Uriel. Verse 8, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So, Verse, when, uh, shall I get, but us, mm-hmm. as when we do get, oh, the older you get, mm-hmm. you should become wiser. Come but on. just because somebody is older doesn't mean they're always, <laughs> Job is going to break it down. Go ahead. Verse 9, great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. Because they're not understanding the judgments of the Lord, and they don't fear the Lord. They could be an old man with gray hair, but he don't know the Lord, so he doesn't know anything. It's an old fool. Read on. Oh, Salakia, Salakia. I think that was the point, but okay, well, Salakia, Salakia. Job 32, verse... Verse 10, therefore I said, hearken to me, I also will show mine opinion. So that, that's, that was it on it. So Job was breaking it down that it, it, it doesn't always mean the age. So Barack had made a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, if, it really it also, depends on the, the spirit in a person. And if they really want to do this work, really with a pure heart. 
Right. And it also says great men are not always wise. So there could God. be a man that's, you know, a uh, million dollars, you know, and everybody thinks, well, God, he's all wise. Well, you know what? You can't have nothing unless the Lord give it. The Lord gave him that, but he's reprobate. You know what God. I'm saying? The Lord let him have that, but that's it for him. That's his consolation right there. That's it. Which um, is a reward. Yeah, he, um, you know, it said, what is it if a man loses his soul but gain the world? Um, that's why there's a lot of what we would call great men in this world, but they're not wise. They're not always wise. Uh, um, neither do the age to understand judgment. So really that that hit two, two uh, phases right there. Great men God. and aged men. So God, mm -hmm. God, and and I, I this might be a good closing point, you know, just on that because what you brought out, Brock, and that uh, that little uh, uh, breakdown that you put together, that was powerful. So this is the book of John, four twenty two to twenty four. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father mm, in spirit yeah. and in truth, Come on. for the Come Father on. seeketh such to worship Him. Perfect. God, God is spirit. It's like it. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And that's the ticket right there. And what is the truth? The laws of God. What's the spirit? The Word of God. It all. It's Come all on. saying the same thing. So the Lord said the true worshipers must stand up. They're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I want to get this last one, brothers. That is powerful, King. That that right there is a cherry on top for sure. My Banyam said celebrities and famous men are seen as great men, but none of them are truly wise. Con, oh, con. Wisdom of this world, right? Con. Con. So here's Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 13. The favorite. You know it, Ock. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. That's right. Call her law young. He Hallelujah. made it clear. He made it clear. Brother said, you know, you look in this Bible, you're going to see fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord. And there it is right there to cap it off. I, those was potent and powerful. I ain't trying to come behind none of that. If anybody got anything to offer, please do. I think that's a, I think that's a drop of mic right there, King. <laughs> that's a closer. That's a closer yeah. one there. <laughs> and I think the needle skipped on the record, too. And everybody was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, call her lawyer, Abba Nawa, the water Abba. You're just gorgeous to us. Uh, fear of Yah and keep his commandments. Um, look at the powerful sisters in there. That's a must. And, you know, start there, right? Family, uh, keep it simple. Start right there. Start fearing. And um, I'll, I'll share this testimony. I, um, I was saying this to Elder just a little while ago. I realized that I didn't fear the Lord, even though I said I did. You know, I realized when I was doing things that I knew were contrary to a righteous lifestyle. Um, <clears throat> I said, you're doing this and you know, the Bible says otherwise. So how can you say you fear him? Cause if you fear him, you wouldn't do that. Right. You would not do that. So, so the whole duty of man, I remember uh, the first time I went out on street teaching, um, I, I, I could not stop saying Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, Revelations 14, 12. I just could not. I didn't want to break nothing else down but that. I wanted to corner everybody with that scripture and be like, listen, this, 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 because that was one of the ones that really grabbed me. And I just realized if this is the whole duty of man, we ain't been taught this, you know. Oh. Um, okay. um, anyone in the chat have any prayer requests? Anybody in the beloved congregation have any re, uh, anything that they want to put in here that we can address before we come off tonight? I, um, I would just say we we just yeah we need to pray for the body you um, know to, to to continue to seek His face and yeah. and to keep that fire burning. Right. Because right. I I do it's just I see some things with. Yasharala, it's like it's it's going on in a lot of the camps. You know, they it's like their light is fading, and yeah. I've been hearing brothers saying this too. Yeah. So, and but this is it's prophecy too, though, Barack. 
he said in the last days many are going to depart from the faith. So some some you know we see in that. Right. So we got to pray for the brothers to keep the whole armor of the Lord on. Mm -hmm. Connor, one keep of that the armor on. Connor, that was powerful. And you know it, it's going to be sad. It's going to break our hearts a little bit. Much wisdom is much sorrow. We're going to see this type of stuff, but that's where we fill in the void and we pray. That mercy endureth forever. We pray for them. Um, one of the Bulakiums, um, he asked for uh, for the elders and everybody to put prayers for him to travel. I know he's going to travel and see his bond um, graduate. And you know he's looking forward to go out there and bring his bond to word and all these beautiful things. Um, my sister said, I'm a busy mother, but I desire a more disciplined life. Khan, we pray that, you know, discipline, Father God, we'll put all these into prayers, but we pray that we become more disciplined and um, keep shooting at it. You know, a man falls seven times seven, seven, what is it, seven times 70? Um, seven times 70. Oh. Uh, so so if, 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 if you, let's say you were doing decent for a week or two and then you fell off in your discipline, um, then you know what? Just try it again, sis. Just continue to endure. We were talking about enduring. That's part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And then also what the king said, he said, graduation for my seed, rolling with my mom and rib. Tom, we'll lift prayers to travel, king. All praises. Yahweh speed with you. Going to be hard to deal with mom. <laughs> I know, king, but you've been doing a real decent job. You've been doing a real decent job of, of growing in this truth. And we love you, king. And when you come back, um, you know, we'll, we'll get back together. Uh, we'll go camp at Elder Eliakim's and all that good stuff. Uh, Yasha Allah, he said, beautiful scripture, Elder. It was, you guys. You guys brought out some outstanding fire, all praises by Hashem. The recall always in the house. Uh, we don't take that for granted. We know, uh, you know, no. let's, read, let's read a couple scriptures just to support this beautiful spirit. So let me bring them up real quick, and then we'll close out tonight. Like I said, I didn't want to come around it, but just there's just so much love. Let's just go ahead and and and, and get it. Um, uh, let's get this real quick. So I'm gonna go to a window. Let me get this and share. All right, come on. So it goes like this: Psalms 82 and 3. Defend the poor, you congregation of the living. Defend the fatherless, you congregation of the living. Do justice to the afflicted and needy, you congregation of the living. Psalms 89 and 14. Justice and judgment are the habitations of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. This is the type of congregation of the living. Isaiah 56 and 1, thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Right. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness is to be revealed. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are. We're conduits of this righteous judgment and righteous justice. We're conduits of all these things, mercy and truth. And, um, and with that, Father God, we are so grateful for you. Uh, family, uh, let's see what we have in the chat real quick. Shalom, family. This was beautiful class, and you brothers are always in the spirit. Yes, they are. They are outstanding. Um, brother said, the water to the congregation. Brother said, 12 gates. Thank you. Man, all praises. All praises it's all praises. All praises. So let's go to the east, and let's pray this out, beloved. Let's do it. Come on, sisters to and brothers to the east, sisters. Um, if you're ready, let's give all glory and praise. Let's come before the mercy seat. Let's come before the throne. Praise in his name. Hallelujah. Call hello, Abba Nawa Yahweh, Tawa Da Abba. Thou would die for the mosh for the nation, thou would die for your spirit and wisdom. Father God, tonight the word came out unrefutable, hands down, first round knockout on anything that would try to come against the congregation of your living. Father God, put the love in our hearts for the congregation of the dead, for those that you have chose to wake up and come out of it as you've done for us. You could do it for us. You could do it for those, as the elder said, that you have chosen. And for those that, you know, um, uh, heed and take heed to this word, put us in that uh, situation to help them. Let them know they have a place to come, whether they be in Spokane or they be out here in SAC. 
Let them know that they can come on and learn the word and just absorb this word. And then also for, for those that are, are absorbing, absorbing the word, Father God, we pray that they share this thing and send it to their family. Don't let any thought come into your mind and make you think, oh, they won't receive this. That's not up to us to decide. That's up to the Father. That's why Christ said, I have all of them except the one that you, you know, you took or, or that, that was going to betray me, which was Judas Iscariot. So he has all of those that he's going to do. So we don't know who that is. The Father knows the beginning from the end. So let's have that spirit in us that the Father can do a thing and that we don't turn our wheels in the wrong direction and that we be disciplined and mercy be with us in our travels and that we're able to minister to our mothers, sisters, cousins, brothers, and thawadah for the homes that have come under the headship of Yahweh Bahashem HaMashiach and the fathers and the, and the elders and all that. Father God, thank you for giving us decency and order and giving us structure. That is what's preserving the uh, congregation of the living. So Father God, we just thawadah and give all praises called Haloyim we adore you, we fear you, we worship you, we need you, and um, we just cherish what you do with all of us. And Thawada th again for our beloved Mashbaka, the 12 gates. Keep them in spirit, keep them in health, keep them in power and wisdom, and keep them safe. And let, let them continually shine the light of Yahweh Hashem and Kwam Yasha'Allah to the nation for those that are moving forward in this glorious light. In your glorious name, Father God, we praise. And the congregation says, Oh. Hallelujah. 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 I'll praise the Most High. And hey. my rib says, Thawada 12 Gates for being true brothers to my husband in this truth. Hey, and believe me, she mean that, bro. Oh, praise all praises. Hey. All praises. Mm -hmm. Dwada, Dwada to you guys for, for the love, for the continued love and, and just 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 the outstanding work that you guys are putting in for the nation, you know, and, and, and to your rib too, Ak, for doing doing the work of a virtuous woman, you know, and, and all, all that matters, you know what I mean? And, and it, it's, it's something to be recognized and praised. And so we we appreciate you guys and keep up the mighty, mighty, mighty work, beloved. We love y'all. We love y'all too. And with that, yeah. Kwame Ashala and Shalom. Kwame Ashala. Kwame Ashala. Shalom. 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 Shalom.